went for Pegros. And welcome once again to Austin, Texas. Joel Myers along with Ron Jaworski and Steve Atkinson. An absolutely magnificent autumn afternoon. The three and four Texas Longhorns taking on the Baylor Bears. Baylor trying to win for the third time in Austin over their last 23 tries. And right now looking at a third and 12 back in their own 25. We are just underway. Two snaps into the game. And the option for Gerard Douglas. Brought down across the 29. So a punting situation. And the Texas defense holds. Three and out for Baylor. Damon Luckett making the stop. The defensive secondary did a nice job, and they attacked uh, the new starting Cody Donner on the second play of the game. They went to the option to the right side where Tony Holmes and Aaron Babineau are in the game. They held him on three, forcing him to punt. White goes back. Brian White, the sophomore from Deer Park, Texas, waiting for the punt from Ty Atterbury. Low wobbler. And fortunately, it didn't hit. The Texas Longhorn player who had his back to the ball, Taji Allen. Great field position for the Longhorns for their first offensive series of the day at their own 28-yard line. An up-and-down season, though, for their starting quarterback, James Brown. He's a junior from Beaumont, Texas. Six-foot, 190-pounder. Did not play against Baylor last year. Had a phenomenal day against Baylor two years ago. The numbers over his last three, not exactly scintillating. Yeah, and the, uh, the interesting number there is the interceptions. This is a guy historically that has not thrown many interceptions. In 94, only 1.7%. In 95, 3.7. This year, he's up to 4.2% of his passes intercepted. A little bit high. Texas in the eye. Ricky Williams, your main man, gets it. Makes the nice cut across the 35. Williams for a big game. All the way to the 37, near the 38. Close to 10 yards on the pickup. As we have an opportunity now to look at the Chili's starting lineup. First, the backs and receivers for the Texas Longhorns. And the young man we just saw, Ricky Williams, they call him Little Earl because of his bill. Like is, Earl Campbell, and he is a phenomenal cutback man. He is a complete package. He can block, he can catch, and he can run. Up front, Dan Neal, their right guard, the real experience, the senior from Cypress Creek, Texas. Four-year starter, Outland Trophy candidate. First down, Williams again. Check that, Sean Mitchell spinning all the way to the 45 for seven more. Kia Cody, the free safety, making the stop defensively for the Baylor Bears. Front seven, not a lot of experience. In fact, Dean Jackson, the middle linebacker, is the only returning starter among the linebackers. And he had a big game last week against uh, Iowa State, 10 tackles. And in the secondary, George McCullough, big day last week against Iowa State, his second pick of the season. He is their best defensive player. As you said, he now has two interceptions. Second and three, Mitchell in motion. First pass of the game for James Brown. Or will it be? He'll run for the first down. And a nifty move inside enemy territory to the 46. McCullough tripped up the quarterback, but not before. A long game for James Brown and the troubled four. Lunch last Sunday morning with a former Longhorn and an agent. They thought the former Longhorn picked up the tab. As it turned out, it went on the agent's hotel bill, and that's where the problems were created. Right. Yeah, they will uh, not start today, but they will play. And this is a big game for John McAvick and, and Texas, and I would expect those guys to be back in the game very soon. First down outside of the 46 of Baylor on the counter for Sean Mitchell. Banging it straight ahead after starting over to the right side inside the 46 more for Mitchell. Cody again. We call Cody's name too often. The free safety, you know. It's a great day running-wise for the Texas Longhorns because they're into the secondary. And that was a real concern coming in for Baylor that they were undersized tackle to tackle with Texas. And Texas would run it right Right at him. In their scheme, uh, you know, Cody and Art more like to get nosy. They like to get up near the line of scrimmage and make tackles. So, yes, I believe we will be calling their names a lot today. Situation early has been second and short each time for the Longhorns. It's second and four now. Brown with all day. And the wide receiver can't hang on, and it's intercepted, picked off. The linebacker, we were just talking about Dean Jackson coming up with a pick. And it should have been a grab by Brian White, the sophomore. He couldn't hang on with a pass from Brown. When we come back, Jackson gives it back to the Baylor Bears. They take over in solid position at their own 28. 
That last interception was a ball that could have been caught, but it wasn't. Brian White went up, kind of knocked it out by himself. First and 10, Baylor. Ball at their own 28 after a very efficient drive to start the day for the Texas Longhorns. And Gerard Douglas, big yardage across the 35, close to a first down near the 38. Let's look back on that pick just before we broke away. You'll see James Brown set nicely in the pocket here, moves to his left to get his vision, delivers the ball just a hair high, but a receiver, Brian Wentz, got to come up with that catch. You can see he knocked it out with his knee. That's a free ball in the secondary. And I tell you, there's a drill they do every single day of practice. And that ball is up in the air. Defenders, go get it. They'll bring in the sticks for the measurement after a pickup of just about 10 for Gerard Douglas. Talked about the junior from Converse, Texas, leading the Bears with just about 600 yards coming into the game, averaging 101 over the final four this year. He would become the first in Baylor Bear history to record back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. So we'll keep an eye on Douglas today. Home run threat at the wide receiver positions. We look at the Chili's backs and receivers in the starting lineup. Khalif Muhammad, a triple threat as a runner, a receiver, and also a kick returner. But for the next snap, we'll look at the offensive line for Baylor. First down. They got it across the 38. And Douglas, Douglas took himself right out of the play. Good penetration by Renfro. Just the same. And now the offensive line for the Baylor Bears. And a young group up front. In fact, they start three sophomores on the offensive line. Michael Johnson, the junior from Katy, Texas, has definitely been a stabilizer. Uh, 6'3", 315 pounds. He is a stabilizer, and he is their most consistent lineman in that group. They lose a couple of the play. Caught it second and 12. The workaholic Douglas losing his footing on the thin turf here. Down to the 40. It'll bring up third and long. Defensively, do we continue with the starting lineup? Now look at the Longhorns of Texas. Biggest surprise, their outside linebacker, Aaron Humphrey, a true freshman from Lubbock. The biggest surprise by far in their front seven. And he is a pass rusher, a stand-up guy. He's playing spectacular right now. Man in the secondary, Taji Allen, the only one of the regular foursome in the starting lineup in the secondary in there because of the suspension and the reinstatement of the other three. The screen is there. Douglas has it. Will he get to the first down marker? No. Nice drop by Tyson King, the linebacker, the senior from El Campo, Texas. That was outstanding linebacker play. When you get Gerard Douglas in the open field, that's a tough play. We'll take a look at this from the end zone. Ball almost hit, but Gerard Douglas out there on the perimeter. This is where you want to get him the ball. He has tremendous quickness. Nice job of playing off that block, but King comes in and makes a terrific play in the open field. So Ty Atterbury in for his second punt of the afternoon. The first is short wobbler. Brian White, the man who was just guilty of losing the ball on the interception, waiting him back for the punt. Much better one by Atterbury. White takes it the eight. Good coverage downfield. He won't make it to the 15. He's dropped at the 14-yard line. Take a timeout when we come back. Texas has it for the second time with no score deep in their own territory. I'll buy 10 of these. You're Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders? <laughs> it's him. <laughs> You're the greatest, man. Mind if I get a picture? Thanks, bro. You mind if I write a check? Sure, Dion. I'm just going to need to see some ID. Say what? Yes, like driver's license, a library card. Checks. What a pain. Your license? Employee ID but now there's a better way. The Visa Check Card. It's an ATM card with a Visa logo that deducts from your checking account automatically everywhere Visa's accepted. I'm going to have to call to see if you can cover this. The Visa Check Card works just like a check, only better. On the second offensive series for the Texas Longhorns, wide receiver Mike Adams, the all-time leader in receiving in Texas history, on the sideline still. He is one of the four troubled Texans that had lunch with the agent. They made restitution because the players thought a former Longhorn picked up the tab for actually brunch last Sunday, to be accurate. So restitution was made, but Mike Adams still on the sideline on the second series for Texas. No score. They've got it at their own 14. Joel Myers on with Ron Jaworski and Steve Atkinson down on the sideline. And Brown ready to go. Sean Mitchell or Bacon, Ricky Williams, the sophomore, 
hurdling past the 17 to the 18 yard line for a gain of four brought down by Donnie Embra and Malcolm Hamilton. Texas running out of the eye, giving the ball to Williams deep in the backfield, kind of a pick a hole, let your offensive line just get a body on a body and let Ricky pick a spot to run. Baylor did a nice job of maintaining their gap responsibility on that play. He's a turnaround. He's from San Diego. It seems like somebody packed 10 schools have recruited out of the Lone Star State in recent years. Second and six. Going deep. And a great grab by the wide receiver, Matt Davis. So Matt Davis with a healthy chunk of yardage all the way to the 40. He gets 16 of the pickup. Coverage provided by Matt Anderson, but really thrown over the right shoulder so only he could get it, Ron. Absolutely perfect throw by James Brown. Matt Davis on the outside, runs the stutter go. In other words, he comes off about three-step stutters and then takes off. And this ball is thrown perfect. You see Matt reach out, pull it in, get them feet down for the reception. Outstanding. You see it from the other angle. Perfect throw in the box, taps the toes, first down. John Mitchell bending into the boundary, but not much available. Only to the 41 for a yard. Hartmore forced him out with strong safety. Mitchell out of LBGA High School right here in Austin. He is a senior. Quite a package second team. Junior Conference All-American a couple of years ago at Blinn College. So they've got a nice combination of the backfield. Ricky Williams who beat him up, lowers his shoulder, and then the speed of Sean Mitchell as well. And Mitchell averages 4.8 yards per rush, so he can also pick him up and lay him down. Second and long, second and nine now for Texas. Flanker screen. And Sean Mitchell, who is split outside of the wide receiver, has it across the 45 to the 47, near the 48. Short of the first down by a couple, though, tripped up by Rodney Artmore. In talking to uh, Gene Dahlquist, who is the offensive coordinator for Texas, he said they wanted to get the screenplay back in their offense. They went with the quick screen right there, and it was effective. They want to work the perimeter of the Baylor defense. It's interesting because they were so effective running between the two tackles the first couple of snaps. <laughs> that, that field is 160 feet wide. You might as well attack all of it. Third, a little less than three. Brown out of the shotgun. Low toss. Good grab. Will he get to the marker? Yes. And a first down. What an effort by Ricky Williams. He's got it to the 48 of Baylor. Did most of it on his own after a very low toss. Well, there's a very interesting stat on Ricky Williams. He has 732 yards rushing so far this season. 516 have come after contact. There was a real-life example there of contact. He blakes the tackle and first down. You'll see right here, Brown sets in the pocket again, working the perimeter. A little low throw, but a real nice catch by Ricky Williams. Soft hands, lowers the head. You see two, three, finally the third guy makes the tackle. Yards after catch, gets the first down. Made Dean Jackson miss. He doesn't. He doesn't have the first down. From the 48 now. Deep drop by Brown. Has the man available. It's his tight end, Fitzgerald. Touchdown, Texas. Last year, Fitzgerald on the receiving end of a 70-yarder against Banner. Not quite as long, but good for 48 yards. Absolutely perfect organization right here of the passing game. You'll see Brown set in the pocket, the pump fake out to the right, makes the safety bite. Here you got Pat Fitzgerald singled up on safety, Rodney Armour. That's a matchup that favors Texas. Perfect throw by James Brown, touchdown. Phil Dawson in for the point after. It's out of the hole to Schultz's to putter, and it's perfect. Six minutes and 41 seconds left in the first 15 minutes of play. Brown on the 48-yard hookup with Fitzgerald and the Longhorns at the early lead. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you this afternoon by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. 
Welcome back to Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium. I like those two names. Joel Myers along with Ron Jaworski and Steve Atkinson down to the sideline. And James Brown talking to his coordinator about that hookup with Pat Fitzgerald, a 48 yarder. And now Fitzgerald, the all time touchdown leader among tight ends in Longhorn history, surpassing the old Mark Kerry Cash. The Cash twins. What a career they had here. Kerry and Keith. Stockton kicks it away. Douglas waits back deep. And another boomer from Stockton right out of the end zone. So better third series will come first and ten at their own 20. They've got one first down over their first two stall on their last drive. Let's see if Alfred can get it going. Banner was down big time. Chuck Reedy's squad was down 21 to 7 homecoming Saturday last week in Waco and came back with 42 unanswered points. Mm. They have the ability to put points on the board. I think what you're going to see now is Baylor open it up a little bit. I had a chance to talk to Mike Gundy earlier in the week. He is their offensive coordinator, and they wanted to attack the entire field, sideline to sideline and end zone to end zone. Now they're spreading the defense this time, Ron, out of the huddle from the sideline with two to each side. Douglas the single set. Alfred can move, but not this time. He's corralled by Gray Mosher. And so far today in the Big 12, what a win for Nebraska on the road at Oklahoma. Colorado surprisingly in a tussle ride now with Missouri in Columbia. Tight one. Game Stillwater. Kansas barely on top of Iowa State. As we mentioned at the top of the telecast, Texas can control their own destiny, run the rest of the schedule with victories, and they will win the South Big 12 title. Match up at the Trans World Dome in St. Louis for the conference championship. Alfred with plenty of time. Has the man, and it's dropped. Mark Morris Anderson should have had it. Dwight Kirkpatrick may have deflected it coming over a little bit late, the outside backer. And he had a couple players wide open on that play. Uh, Bradley Demel, the tight end, ran up flat and out, was wide open, but Alfred could not find him. They're running the misdirection off the play action. <laughs> you look on the sideline right there, I think you see Mike Gundy. He saw it like we did up in the stands. Unfortunately, the guy that had to see it, the quarterback, Alfred, did not. It's so now third and long once again. That's been the early story, unfortunately, if you're a Baylor Bear fan. Third and a little more than 10, almost 11. Alfred with a bullet to the tight end for a first down. Bradley Dommel takes it out to the 40 for a gain of a little more than 20. You really have to wonder how long Texas will go without putting the, the uh, guys that uh, were not were suspended but then reinstated back into the lineup here. Receivers right here, they go double zone, another pump fake to make the safety vacate the middle of the field. Throws it back inside to Domel. A little bit too late, the reaction of the, of the Texas secondary. It's got to happen quicker for the defense. Toss sweep. Douglas makes a miss. Good yardage for Gerard Douglas to the 47. A gain of seven on first down. He took quite a shot in the process. Baylor goes back to a base formation. Give the ball to Douglas, the guy that makes things happen for their offense. Last week, 8.1 yards every time he touched the ball and two touchdowns. That's why they want to give him the football. He was a two-time first-teamer all Southwest Conference last year. But not only a tailback, but also as a kick returner. Second and three. Douglas on the misdirection almost got it deep into the secondary pulled down in the 46 of the Longhorns if he busts the ankle tackle of Taji Allen he may take it down the sideline the weakness of the Texas defense has been their front seven they've been giving up 367 yards per game totally on defense but they really haven't gotten the penetration from their down linemen and they have good enough talent up front they just have not got the penetration to blow things up in the backfield and put the offense in the known passing situations Another first down for the Baylor Bears. 7 0 lead for Texas. 440 and counting. Left in the first quarter. Muhammad the motion man. They move the pocket for Alfred. He's got the man, and he's got a first down to Muhammad. Inside the 20 to the Texas 19. Again, playing to Jermaine Alfred's strengths, giving him movement, coming out to, of the pocket on the perimeter, buying some time. You'll see Muhammad coming in the slot, number one right there, singled up on number 45. Before. That's a matchup that you'd like to create. Have him jump the outside, up the sideline, and a great throw by Alfred. Wouldn't they take that all day, Muhammad against the outside linebacker? 
They'd love it. The safety coming over late. First down to the 19. Deepest penetration so far by Baylor. Douglas diving down to the 12. Great yardage again, eight on first down. Taken down by the true freshman Casey Hampton out of Galveston. Outstanding play calling on this drive. Mike Gundy has got the Texas defense off balance with the run in the pass. That's critical for offensive execution. Dictate to the defense what you want to do with the football. Chuck Reedy, head coach for the Bears, told us earlier this week they were a little cautious the last two years against Texas because Texas was playing for the conference championship each of those two games. And they said that maybe they were a little bit too cautious going in. Yeah, they're going to play to win, not to lose. That's a good approach. Douglas again. And they'll put him down outside of the 13 of the big play by Gray Mosier. Otherwise, he's close to the first down, diving to the 10. But his knee was down at the 13, and now key third down early for Baylor. Gray Mosier, number 95, gets penetration. I said a moment ago, your defensive linemen have to break through those double teams, break through the blocks, and create some, some blow-ups in the backfield. In other words, stop the play before it gets started. Mosier on that play did exactly that, or it would have been the first down. So now third, right at four. And they capitalize with their best drive so far that started back at their own 20-yard line. Two to each side. Douglas the single set. Gerard Douglas. He'll be brought down well short of the first down, losing yardage. Aaron Babino. He is number 38. Baylor came in with four wide on that play, and we'll see from the end zone here. Tried to spread the defense out. Texas came with the blitz. They brought the linebackers. You'll see, boom, the linebackers attack the line right there, and that's what you have to do. Get that penetration. Here comes Babino making the tackle. When the safety is in the backfield like that, that means he's playing good defense. Kyle Atterbury has only tried four so far this year. He's hit on two of the four, the longest from 39 yards away. This is going to be a 32-yard attempt. Out of the hole of the quarterback. And from 32, he's brought it left, and he misses it wide left. Hit it straight, but on the near side hash, he had to bend it a little right to left. So a miss from 32 yards away by Atterbury. He's now two for five on the season. And it stays a 7-0 lead for the Texas Longhorns. Close, but no cigar. Just outside the pipes. 18 feet, 6 inches. He needed about, oh, uh, need them goalposts just a little wider. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, the wait is finally over. A movie classic, Disney's The Lion King, coming to ABC. That is tomorrow night at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then ABC's double feature continues with the world premiere of To Brave Alaska, starring Alyssa Milano. Four great hours of movies. That is all tomorrow night on ABC. Brown faking one way, going the other way. And his intended target, Ricky Williams, on his wallet at the time. And the play made by his own left tackle, the big O, Octavius Bishop. And I say the big O, 6'5", 305 pounds. He made the play. Not by design. I like the play call, though. Make the screen right, go with the screen left. They want to get the screen back in their passing game. Not a bad beginning for Brown. And take away that one pick, because that was the... Wide receiver who gave it away, Brian White. It was off his hand. Should have been a reception. It's only the second miss for Brown. Working with a split backfield this time. Fake the toss. Go with the big play up the middle. And the gain by Priest Holmes for a first down across the 30 to the 35. Brought down by Roddy Artmore. First carry of the day for the senior from San Antonio. He missed all of last year. ACL injury. His left knee. Great year in 94, though. You'll see it right here. The entire Baylor defense keying on Ricky Williams and the, the comeback underneath the Priest on the counter play. Outstanding line play. It's always the key on counter plays. Linemen have to hold their blocks a little bit longer. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, a single set of the backfield this time for the Longhorns. First half from the 35. Williams going low for three. Little Earl, as they call him, is only a sophomore, remember. Ricky Williams from San Diego, six foot, 220 pounder. Averages 105 yards a game coming in, 24th best in the nation. 
And when you talk about Little Earl, numbers fairly comparable at this stage of the respective careers. Those are incredible stats, and one that is not on there, Ricky has 31 catches. At this point in Earl Campbell's career, he had zero. Those numbers after 19 games for Williams, as well as Campbell. Brown after the play fake. And he's got a first down, taking it in. Wayne McGarrity, who got the start today due to the problems for Mike Adams. First catch for the sophomore from San Antonio this afternoon is good for the first down to the 46. Obviously, they like to move the pocket with James Brown. Yeah, we'll take a look at Dan and Neal, number 69. Boom, he comes down, makes the block, stays with it. There's a chop at his knees, and also takes the lineman down, and the fine throw from Brown to McGarity. George McCullough a little bit late. Dan Neal, number 69, nice job of coming in there, holding the position, staying with the block as the quarterback rolls out and goes for the knees and cuts him down. Misdirection for Ricky Williams. Baylor stays at home and holds it to a gain of a yard and a half, close to two. Final minute of the first quarter is Mason at Artmore. Combined for that stop. It's a 7-0 lead for the Texas Longhorns. They traveled 86 yards the second time they got the ball. The final 48 on a pass to the tight end, Pat Fitzgerald. I guess you could go around the country and find just a few Pat Fitzgeralds, couldn't you? <laughs> There's one of the Northwestern that uh, isn't too bad, is it? Not bad at Only all. Only the defensive player of the year a year ago. Second and long. Second and just about nine. Brown can run for the first down. Spins and gets the necessary yardage inside the 35. Flag at the end of the play. Robert Mason finally collecting James Brown. The Texas line has been inconsistent so far this year. In this game, they have been very consistent. And of course, the Baylor team is not one that blitzes a whole lot. They expect to get their pass rush from their down line, and they only blitz 5% of the time. So if the quarterback doesn't Dead get foul. pressure on him from the first down foul. line. I guess the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. That was just frustration at the end of the play after a missed tackle. Exactly right. Hal Dowden, the referee. And they're going to look at the tail end, see if we can pick up that personal foul. That's a linebacker, Glenn Coy, who came in a little bit with the helmet. I've seen worse. <laughs> but that was I've on Sundays, that. not yes, Saturdays. I've seen worse. <laughs> and that is our final play of a very productive 15 minutes for the Texas Longhorns. They've got a 7-0 lead. And at the start of the second 15 minutes, they will have it first and 10 at the Baylor 19 when we come back. Texas at home with a 7-0 lead after one. The Baylor Bears owned it for more of the first quarter, but with the 638 that the Texas Longhorns had it, they were far more productive. Great numbers after 15 minutes of play, 165 yards, Ron Jaworski, offensively. Mul multiply that times four, and you call it a great day, but the big play, the pass from James Brown to Pat Fitzgerald for the touchdown. Start the second quarter, Texas with a 7-0 lead, and they've got it to the Baylor 19. Looking again for Fitzgerald, touchdown Texas! Great protection once again for James Brown. And Baylor is not a high blitz percentage team. They went with the blitz on that time. Now I know why they don't blitz. They can't cover very well in the secondary man-to-man. -man. Because when you blitz, you're going to get man coverage in the secondary. And Pat Fitzgerald against a safety or a linebacker is a mismatch. Dawson to the point after. Fourteen to nothing Longhorns. First play of the second quarter. Five seconds into the second quarter. Eleven career touchdowns now for Fitzgerald. We'll take a look at Brown, number five, rolling pumps. Looks back, throws across the field, right on the money. Boy, that is an outstanding throw. Nikia Cody in the coverage just couldn't stay with Fitzgerald. James Brown, very happy. 
John Makovic. Very happy. Brown has been terrific. What a pick me up for the Texas offensive unit because James Brown came into the game with only one more touchdown over the first seven than interceptions thrown. And he, already two touchdown tosses today. Yeah, he was struggling. He was uh, throwing some balls that, that were ill-advised, hurting his football team with interceptions. But uh, this looks like the this looks like the Brown we saw a couple years ago when he threw for five touchdowns against Baylor. Let's head downstairs. Join the third member of our team once again, Steve Atkinson. Steve. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe. The feeling was before the ball game, guys, that they would hold these four suspended players for the time being at least a quarter. John Makovic is a disciplinarian. He wants to prove that hey, guys, we can win without you. If that looks to be the case right now. All four are warming up as we speak and it looks like they're going to join the uh, second quarter action with their teammates back upstairs to you guys all right Steve and I truly believe John Makovic even if he's down 14 to nothing still would have kept him out for at least the first 15 minutes I think so huh I think it's an easier decision when he's up <laughs> right, you got it. You know, <laughs> kicks it away and they're going for the short one fair catch being called for by the Baylor tight end heads up play by Clifford Isom their backup tight end and he'll take it. Good field position for the Bears outside of their own 29. How many times have we watched a football game and saw that style of kick and the, the receiving team does not do the fair catch? Some guys are just unaware that, hey, you can fair catch on the kickoff. There was a very, very wise play. Westbrook waiting to get into the game. The senior from Oceanside, California. He's already blocked a couple of punts. He's such a multiple threat for him. The Texas Longhorns as a defensive back Thomas as well three starters in fact out of the secondary Westbrook Thomas and Carter and they all three stay on the sidelines for this offensive series for Banner Dexter Ford his first carry of the day the sophomore Dallas is the Highlands High School. Joel, I was just uh, here a moment ago. I just got punched in the arm up here in the box, and I turned around. It was an old friend of mine, Jerry Sizemore, yes. great from the University of Texas, uh, here watching uh, his team. In fact, another old teammate of mine, Jim Bertelson, was inducted into the, uh, the Hall of Honor here at uh, Texas, and hopefully uh, get a chance to say hello to Bert somewhere along the line today. What an honor for him. 14 to nothing lead for Texas, opening minute of the second quarter. Second and four. They go with the backup and Ford's into the secondary instead of Douglas Ford inside the 45 to the 43. Finally strong arm by Dwight Kirkpatrick. But he hit the hole in a hurry. And a huge hole at that for Dexter Ford. We'll take a look at the offensive line coming off the ball. Stopping the penetration and Ford bounces it outside. Good peripheral vision to see that hole. Kind of a, you know, when the linemen get on their blocks, it's up to that running back to find a place to run. Dexter Ford does a nice job from the end zone. You'll see it here. A mano on a mano, a man and a man. Find the green grass. And Ford does it for a nice play and a nice game. Great kick out block by the tight end. Schmeller firing. Muhammad, great grab. Late recognition of the ball in his direction, but he's got another first down to the 31. Picked it up late. Made the most of it, though. And again, Kirkpatrick in on that stop. The outside backer. So Alfred getting rid of it in a hurry. Second grab of the day for Khalid Muhammad. He's a senior. Leads the team in receptions. And very quickly, Baylor has taken it after that little pooch kick. Set it up in pretty decent field position to the 29. Football is a game of field position. Yes. When you have to go 80 yards or more, you're not going to do it very often. You shorten the field, you can score points. First and 10 at the Texas 31. The deep drop for Alfred. He's got decent wheels. And he almost got into the tight end, but it was almost taken away, too, by the outside backer. He wanted Bradley Domo, the junior from Needville, Texas. Almost taken away by Kirkpatrick. When Alfred broke the pocket against the man-to-man -man coverage, he had a lot of room to run. He decided to make the throw right there. Probably ill-advised. He could have could have made some yardage on the run. One of the few times that we've seen Alfred and Baylor throwing on first down. His third miss thus far. There's a late flag over on the near sideline. The options belonging to the Longhorns. And they will take the penalty. Ineligible, downfield, on the offense, five-yard penalty. 
Replay first down. You're right. He should have run the ball. <laughs> That's right. I think his offensive lineman thought he was going to run the ball. Nebraska dominating Oklahoma today. It was 57 to nothing before Oklahoma got on the board. Colorado starting to pull away from Missouri on the road. That Nebraska Oklahoma game was zip zip at the end of the first quarter. Figure it out. Now first down over. First and long though. Beyond the 36, it'll be first and 15. Muhammad he wanted, but the ball was deflected. Getting up and knocking it down. It was Aaron Humphrey, the young man we documented at the top of the telecast, a true freshman from Lubbock, playing way behind his age. We'll see Alfred set in the pocket here on the quick drop. They have no backs in the backfield. They're trying to set up the quick screen to Muhammad on the outside. Humphreys does a terrific job. The coaches love this guy. He is an intense guy. He can make plays. Uh, you know, you almost hate to say it, but you know that he reminds the coaches of Lawrence Taylor. On second and 15. Muhammad has it, breaking the tackle. He takes it down inside the 27. Got away from Taji Allen. Otherwise, there's almost no game the reception. But Chris Carter finally catches up with him. And Carter into the game now. The first of the suspended and then reinstated ones, along with Westbrook, into the secondary. Off the fake to Ford. You'll see Upper set in the pocket, a crossing pattern to Muhammad. This guy is an excellent punt return guy, and you can see in the open field, he's a tough guy to bring down. Taji Allen could not make the play. Muhammad gets some positive plays out of it. So there's Carter, Westbrook also in there. Two of the four that were suspended and brought back, and the screen is set up for Muhammad, making his way to the first down inside the 20. All the way to the 13-yard line, and a flag at the end of the play. There was a hit downfield, Pigras throwing his arms in the air like I didn't do it. And was there a late hit by the wide receiver trying to block for Muhammad? They come right back to the flanker screen that Humphreys knocked down two plays ago. They complete it. They get a nice play up the field, but there is a flag. A hold against Pigras. Another look. Number 11, Pierce Pigras. Uh, well, he's kind of holding, grabbing, clutching, wrestling. Uh, gets two points for that one. I figure, wait a minute, if Allen holds me first, I get to hold second, don't I? And a couple of punches afterwards. That's a huge play, though. That takes it from the 13 and a first down for Baylor to another third down over for the point of the infraction back outside of the 25. So Westbrook is in there. Who does so much for the Longhorns, not only in the secondary, but also on special teams. Trying to get the crowd involved. Carter's in there as well. We've yet to see the safety Trey Thomas or Mike Adams, the wide receiver. Huge third down for Banner, down 14 to nothing. On the option, Ford won't be able to reverse his field. Banged down by Will Goodlow. That flag didn't mean much, did it? Oh, well, that was huge. Huge. Run the option to the short side of the field. Well defensed. You have to maintain that responsibility. There's the pitch. Make him come back to the inside where you're going to get some pursuit help. And there it is. Goodwin right there to make the play. Kirk Patrick, great oh, job to man. turn it in. So now, Kyle Atterbury, who has already missed from 32 yards away, will now try a 47-yard attempt. With the wind at his back, he has pulled it left. He is 0 for 2 now. So Atterbury misses from 47 in Texas, maintains a 14 to nothing lead. Northwestern meets Iowa for a Big Ten battle. Air Force invades Army. More games from the Pac-10, ACC, and Big 12. Next Saturday on ABC's College Football. Last year against Banner, Texas quarterback and Southwest Conference offense player, offensive player of the year, James Brown, sidelined for the game with a sprained ankle. He watched freshman Richard Walton leave the Longhorns as Walton hooked up on the 70-yard touchdown toss to tight end Pat Fitzgerald in the second quarter. Texas top banner right here in Austin on Thanksgiving Day. They went 6-0 at home, set up a Southwest Conference championship game the next week with Texas A&M, beat the Aggies, and now look who's at quarterback, Richard Walton facing Banner once again. They wanted to get him in over the last couple of games, didn't, and finally they do. 
And on the deep handoff, John Mitchell weaves his way across the 35. Out near the 39 for a gain of nine on first down. So Richard Walton finally gets the opportunity. The coaches said they wanted to get him in the game. The sophomore from Bay City, Texas. Yeah, John McAvitt just believes uh, this young man needs experience. He was wanting to get him in the game, the Colorado game, the Oklahoma game. He just never found the opportunity to do it. He said this week he was going to force himself to get him in the football game to gain him some experience. Just don't know what's going to happen down the road when he's going to have to be put in a tough situation. And look, at wide receiver joining Walton in for the first time today. One of the suspended four reinstated yesterday Mike Adams big hole for Mitchell nice block by Ricky Williams too gets the first down to the 47 of Banner so Ricky Williams can do it all as well well we in the open we talked about him being the complete package he can run he can catch and on this particular play he does an outstanding job of blocking the linebacker you'll see the weak eye right there there's Ricky Williams number 11 does a real nice job of cutting and that is when the guy goes high, you go low and knock him down. That's exactly what he did. So big yardage. Nine of the first try for Mitchell. This time all the way down outside of the 46 for Sean Mitchell. First down, Texas. He comes. Perfect time for the screen. Big and play. Open sideline for Ricky Williams. Cutting it back. Can he go the distance? He might. Inside the 10. Touchdown, Texas! Yep, what a time Boy, what a ball play. screen. John McAvoy said they had to get the screen back in their offense. They've been very effective with it today, and the big play comes off the screen to Williams. Great running, though, after the catch. So Walton gets in on the act. Two touchdown tosses by Brown to the tight end Fitzgerald. This one to Ricky Williams at 46 yards. And now Dawson finishes it up with the extra point. And a 21 to nothing lead now for the Texas Longhorns. It was a must situation for their head coach, John McAvick. His squad has certainly responded so far. 11:21 left in the first half. This will be right back to Austin, Texas, after the long run after the catch by running back Ricky Williams. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change, and by Nike. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Joel Myers, along with Ron Jaworski and Steve Atkinson. If you decided to get up, go get some fajitas. Wasn't a very long drive for the Texas Longhorns. Took all of 29 seconds, three plays. Yeah, this is a nice place to go for fajitas also. Downstairs, oh. very serious. <laughs> Tex-Mex, gotta love it. The recommended <laughs> pregame meal. Douglas waits back at the five. Elijah Perkins instead, the backup running back. Instead, the fair catch called for and taken in by one of the upmen, Dexter Ford, at the 19. Another look back on that score and what an opportunity. Calling a screen when they're on a blitz. You'll see Walton inserted in the game here, number 10, off the play action. They do a nice job of setting this up. Wide open out to Williams. He does a real nice job of setting up the cutback. You'll see number seven coming to the picture right there, Nakia Cody. You got to force him to the sideline. He did not do that, allowed the cutback. And Williams, with great speed, is able to beat everyone else to the end zone. They have not been able to get pressure on the quarterback. That's been the one thing that's hurt. And the they've Baylor gotten, Bears. They only have three sacks, in fact, all year long. And they've gotten beat for two touchdowns when they did. Uh, Fitzgerald gets a touchdown pass, and Williams gets a touchdown pass. From the 20, Dexter Ford. And good yardage on the last drive. After they stalled and missed another field goal. Takes it on first down this time to the 24 for a gain of four. 11 10 and counting left of the first half. All Texas so far was a hit with a home run ball today. Updating you on other scores in the WAC BYU by 15 in the third quarter. No surprise there with Virginia on the road. And now Trey Thomas is in the game for the first time, so the threesome in the secondary is all returned. Westbrook, Thomas, and Carter. Thomas the last one to enter. And the backups gave him a 21 zip lead. Not too shabby. What penetration! 
Chris Akins with a big play, only a yard as we head to New York and check in with John Saunders. Joel, Penn State was the last team to beat Northwestern in the Big Ten. That was two years ago and 13 games ago. Wally Richardson trying to do it one more time, this time to Joe Jerovicious. 63 yards on the touchdown pass. And right now it's a 21-3 lead for Penn State. Joel. All right, John, I think everybody, all the objective ones would say that Northwestern has been extremely fortunate this year. <laughs> Just look back at their Wisconsin game. So now third and five. For the Bears, they are reeling down by 21. Going for the bundle. Contact was made. They won't get the flag. Pete Ross wanted it. Taji Allen with him every step of the way. It appears there and is there a flag. There was a flag at the 46. He was bumping them along the boundary. Incidental contact, as most people would call it, but uh, the referee didn't see it that way. <laughs> Roger Horsky never favors the offensive side. It is against the Longhorns, and the Baylor Bears on 35 desperately needed it. We'll take a look at it right here. Yeah, there's a little push and shoving going on there. Probably the right call. Automatic first down. So I, from I the 25 to, to the 40. <laughs> Allen, senior from Lubbock. Plenty of contact along the sidelines. He had him out of bounds already. Should have let it go at that. That's right. The ball was thrown about uh, four yards outside that five-yard white stripe. Huge first down for Baylor from their own 40. No chance for Muhammad. That would have been tough for Abdul Jabbar, let alone Khalif Muhammad, who's only 5'6. <laughs> Don't forget next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern. Gridiron Greats back on ABC, 11th ranked Northwestern. Battling in Iowa. Air Force goes to war with Army as well. Washington State in the Pac-10 taking on UCLA. ACC rivals clashing. Clemson meeting Virginia. And Baylor, these Bears hosting the Yankees of Texas A&M. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station. And the game's available from your cable operator. That is all coming your way next Saturday. Second and 10 from the 40. Dexter Ford again with a huge hole. To the sideline he goes. And Dexter Ford dragged down from behind by Westbrook inside the 30 at the 28. Red is blocked perfectly. Baylor does a nice job of spreading the field, giving the ball deep in the back the backfield to Ford. Find a hole, get up the field. And right now he's going against that, uh, that Texas defense with all their players back in there. Here we look from the end zone camera, deep in the backfield. Clifton Rubin, number 31, with a nice block. Ford bounces it to the outside. Green grass and blue skies out there, but Bryant Westbrook, number 30, comes in and makes the play. He's fresh. He ought to be able to make that play. First down in Texas territory, just inside the 28 for the Bears. Low to Muhammad. Well, we talked about how important that flag was for Baylor to get the first down on third and five because... Don't forget, a flag denied them a first down to the Texas 13. She could way back outside of the 30. They missed the 47-yard field goal. Denied the opportunity on their previous possession. Now can they capitalize with a flag working in their direction? We look at other scores. Notre Dame from very early today in Ireland. Pac-10 in the first half. USC by a three. And that's a big battle between Washington and USC. Second and ten. Ford to the boundary breaking this tackle and he gets the first down I believe no they're going to say he stepped out of bounds to the 19 bad break for Baylor but he did break that tackle to the free safety Chris Carter who has been on the bench with the other three the other two at least they come back with the same play they spread the field three wide and run the lead play up there with Clifton Rubin making the play the, the uh, Texas front was different that way but they got the same blocking combinations another late flag personal foul against the defense half of this was to the goal automatic first down so first and goal coming up when we come back first let's check in once again with John Saunders John Joel Colorado and Missouri Missouri is giving Colorado fits in this game Coy Detmer had the concussion last week but on the mark to Ray Carruth second time that they hook up for touchdowns great block right there frees him 33 yards 21 13 in Florida right now is rolling over Georgia 20 to nothing. 
And a 21 to nothing lead here. John with nine and a half minutes left in the first half for the Texas Longhorns in a must win situation. Dropping four of their last five. They have taken, dating back to last season though, 10 of their last 11 at home. And now Baylor needs some more time offensively. They will take a timeout, and we will do the same. Critical series coming up for the Bears, down by three touchdowns when we return. Of all the improvements made to the new Jeep Wrangler, like dual front airbags and an easier to use soft top. It's the changes we've made beneath the surface that will really get your attention. It has consumed 72 yards so far. Tack on that personal foul at the end of the run by a four. And a first and goal outside of the nine now for the Baylor Bears is welcoming back to Austin, Texas. Ford stays in the tailback position. He's got it to the boundary, and he takes it all the way inside the four. Late recognition of that for Dexter Ford. He was so committed to going inside his tackle. If he takes it wider on early, I believe he's in. Well, it's easy to be up here in the box and second-guess those guys. Isn't it great? Yes. But he made a positive play. Tra Trey Thomas comes up and uh, pushes him out of bounds. But again, you know, you look to just get positive yards and you get down here. You try to not have a negative play, and Ford gets it up for a positive play. 30 scores in the red zone for the Baylor Bears. 22 of those 30, 73% of the time, they do get it into the end zone. It's very effective offense in the red zone. Run the wing back in motion on second and goal to the four. That's a legal procedure. That's Canadian football. And it's thrown away by Alfred. <laughs> Muhammad went in motion after the wing back started. <laughs> I like that Canadian football. <laughs> Everybody moving in one play. Field's not wide enough, guys. <laughs> There's the frustration <laughs> when you're down by 21 and you see two guys go in uh, motion. At that point, your quarterback's got to just go timeout, timeout. That was a big win you just saw for Michigan at home because Michigan State had taken the last two of the last three. The offense, five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Michigan State had taken two of the last three from the Wolverines. Big recruiting victory for Michigan today, 45 29. Repeat second down, take it back to the nine where they started. It'll be second and goal from there. Baylor comes in with their four wide receiver package, which has been very effective on this drive. And what they've done, they've run when they've spread the field like this. Four wide again and one back. Throwing for it, Muhammad couldn't hold on. He knew he was going to take a lick. The linebacker coming over, Kyle Richardson. Trey Thomas, the safety, was there as well. Putting his receiver in a precarious position. When you're in this area, expect to get hit. Three-step drop, plant, deliver the football. Muhammad's got to make that catch, and with his ability to run in the open field, he'll take that in the end zone. Looks like he put the shock absorbers on very early. Yes, he did. He heard those footsteps. So now third and goal at the nine. Dexter Ford inside the five. Touchdown, Banner. They spread the defense with a three wide receiver set. You were just talking about it and went to the ground game. I feel like I'm calling the plays up here. Every time they spread that field out and give the ball to Ford, they get a positive play. This one a very positive play, a TD. Sophomore from Dallas, Dexter Ford, with the first points of the day for the Baylor Bears. And did they ever need it? Don't forget they were down 21-7. Last week at home, reeled off 42 straight points. That was Iowa State, though. Well, that was a terrific drive right there to get him back in this ball game. Clifton Rubin, number 31, the fullback, some outstanding blocking, and Dexter Ford well, it was huge in that drive. Kyle Atterbury with the extra point. So a big pick-me-up midway through this second quarter for Banner on the road there, now trailing 21-7. An 81-yard drive. Took just about three minutes. A couple more looks. Spread them out. Number 69, Michael Johnson. 
Number 68, Jerome Jackson, do a great job of getting the body on the body, creating the seams for Ford to run up the middle. You'll see it right here. Check the offensive line play right there. Do a great job, Johnson and Jackson, on a cross block in there to create the seam for Ford to take it in. When you run into the end zone untouched from the eight or nine yard line, your offensive line has to do a great job, and they do here. Michael Johnson is their best offensive lineman and the most consistent. And Jerome Jackson did an outstanding job there. The side of that line is 315 pounds and 314 pounds. They ran over the right people. Don't forget the drive was kept alive on a third and five penalty. Pass interference call that took it all the way to the banner 40 yard line. So they finally capitalized on a penalty against Texas after a couple of misses on field goal drives by Atterbury from 47 and 32 yards away. Kind of interesting in that drive you have Carter back in the game Thomas back in the game and Westbrook back in the game they went right down the field on supposedly their best secondary Sean Mitchell over to the far side Mike Scarborough over to the near side the reserve wide receiver is Atterbury gets into it and like he's done so often this year 26 of his previous 34 kickoffs have gone through the end zone now you can make it 27 to 35 well don't forget tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern and 1 Central one on the Pacific Coast as well. Current world champions Michelle Kwan and Todd Eldridge skate in the first major international competition of the season. Thrifty Car Rentals Skate America International. And at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific, 10 PGA stars play nine holes of golf in a unique shot-making showdown. It's the Maryland Shootout. That is tomorrow, right here on ABC Sports. Oh, no, we saw Walt on the last series. Will he stay in? No. It'll be James Brown back in at quarterback. He engineered the first three series, two resulting in a long touchdown for the tight end. Ricky Williams in the secondary. He's got a first down across the 31. And let's head downstairs again and check in with Steve Atkinson. Steve? All right, thanks a lot, guys. As you guys may have mentioned, it is Parents Weekend here at the University of Texas this weekend. Ricky Williams from San Diego, California. You think his mom has a long way to go, but you actually came out here with Ricky, didn't you? Um, yes, I came a couple of months after Ricky moved out. When he left baseball and reported to Texas, I moved to Texas. As you mentioned, he plays professional baseball, Phillies minor league system. Uh, what's his true love, football or baseball? Um, like Ricky says, during baseball season, it's baseball. During football, it's football. All right, thanks a lot, Miss Williams. Okay. Back to you guys upstairs. Brown picking a positive yardage on the scramble, forced out by Mason. I like her answer. She made <laughs> sure right. he's going to stay in both sports. A very political, uh, politically <laughs> correct this time of the year, right? Pickup of just about four for James Brown. Showing some good footwork, and it's interesting because we were talking to the Baylor defensive coach. He said, you know, James Brown two years ago when he threw for five touchdowns against us, which is still a Texas record. He put on about 20 pounds since that 94 game, and maybe he's not using his feet quite as much as he did two years ago. The question is, where do you put the pounds on? Yes. If you put it on your upper body where you gain strength, that's fine. If it gets in the lower body, it can slow you down. On second and six, Sean Mitchell looking for the kick out. He got the block across the 38 for the 39. Leading the way was Dan Neal once again, the experienced right guard for the Texas Longhorns. Boy, just an incredible move by Dan Neal at 6'2", 283. You know, the senior Outland Trophy candidate coming around the corner, getting the kick-out block. I mean, a guy that big showing that kind of speed, he's going to be playing on Sundays, and Mondays probably next year. Third and short. John McAvick's squad leading 21-7. Inside of seven and a half minutes. Left in the first half. They have dominated so far. Let's see how they respond now. After that score by Baylor, their first of the afternoon. Brown out of the shotgun. The blitz is coming, and it's poked away with a flag down to the play from Ricky Williams. Kenyatta Parker with early contact, according to the official. Interference, pass interference against the defense. Spot foul, automatic first down. Another big call, otherwise Baylor gets the ball right back. And again, we head back east. Join John Saunders. John? Joel, Northwestern has to fight out of a hole again today, and it's a big one. Steve Schnur is hit here by Aaron Collins. Matt Fornadel picks it up and stumbles to around the 20-yard line. Northwestern having problems with turnovers. 
Penn State now leads it 27 to 3. They have just kicked their second field goal of the second quarter. Joel, back to you. All right, John. It looks like a balmy day as well in the happiest of all valleys. Happy Valley. Well, a tough place to get in and out of. Across the 42, it's going to be a first down with a timeout called now by Brown and Texas. They're in control. They've got the ball with a 14-point lead when we come back. The difference between children and parents is that children are the ones without a care in the world. Keeping them carefree and protected is the reason you get life insurance for yourself. With State Farm, you'll get a life insurance company that has always received the highest possible ratings for financial strength. And that can help you be sure that your kids will get to be kids for just as long as they please. State Farm understands life. Just talked to Ricky Williams' mom earlier. We had an opportunity to talk to head coach John McEvick. Got his ideas on the sophomore from San Diego. He has power and he has strength, and yet he has the lightest feet of anyone you'll see. He runs, and when tacklers go for him low, he can just step right out of their grasp and keep right on going. He's a good receiver. He can catch the ball, and he's tough to tackle in the open field one-on-one. -on -one. And yet, if you want to take him on and uh, head up with it, he'll run right into you. He's like a raging bull when he runs with a football. Good reason. They call him Little Earl. A bull in a china shop. <laughs> Get out of the way. Well, little Earl Campbell. What comparisons? And only his second year here in Austin. And the numbers are very similar. James Brown back into quarterback with a first down for the Longhorns near their own 43. Moving the pocket after the play fake. And over his shooting with contact there of the ball. Well thrown over the head of Wayne McGarity. So a little action after the play fake for Brown to utilize his footwork. Well, what he didn't do is utilize his footwork. It got him on the perimeter. But you have to set your feet and deliver that ball. He's throwing on the run back across the field. Very difficult to be accurate. You've got to set and deliver the football. He did not do it there. Directed Texas to a 10 and 2 record last year. Overall coming in today, Brown is the starter for the Longhorns. 16, 6 and 1. Ricky Williams making a miss once again takes it to the midfield strike for a gain of just about seven. Got away from the nose tackle originally Roderick Kinney. Kinney did a nice job of filling the hole right there but he's got to make the tackle. He had him right right in the tunnel. You got to make that play but Ricky Williams can make a lot of people miss. So now the Longhorns looking at third and short third and three. Only faced one third down so far this afternoon. Sean Mitchell to the sideline. Will it get there? No. Coming up on the corner, George McCullough makes the big play. So McCullough stops him. Yard shy where he needed to go. A little more than a yard. Decision for Texas. Will they gamble? Terrific play by George McCullough, number five at 5'10, 190, coming up and you know, saving the first down. When your corners come up and make plays like that for no gain, they're playing some football. And George McCullough is Baylor's best defensive football player. Too early to gamble. 5-15 counting left of the first half, 21-7 lead. They'll bring the punter, Mark Schultes. 41-yard average so far as Baylor does not send anybody back deep. Field Scarborough was there also there for the Texas Longhorns to take it in Wallace and Baylor will have it deep in their own territory near their own 10 yard line after the effective punt by Schultz's well tonight on ABC see the luminaries of the pro figure skating world and sparkling performances former world champions Christy Yamaguchi Katarina Vett Dorothy Hamilton Kurt Browning highlight the competition this evening and don't miss the dramatic conclusion of the US pro figure skating championship the romance will continue on an all-new episode of Relativity as well. That is all tonight at 8, 7 Central, right here on ABC. Magnificent day for college football. Perfect football weather. 60 degrees at kickoff. The wind right now at the back of the Baylor Bears from their own 10-yard line, trailing by 14. Dexter Ford's been effective, stays in there instead of Douglas. Spins his way to the 16. 
Casey Hampton picked him up there. Another true freshman performing for the Texas defense like Aaron Humphrey. He's a freshman from Galveston. I'd like to get him in the lineup. They spot him behind Aikens on the depth chart, but they'll play them both at the same time. Aikens, their big man up front. Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator for Texas, has simplified their defensive game plan. They want to take a lot of the thinking out of their, their, their thought process, go out there and play football. So far, he's been fairly effective with that approach. They go to the up man, the fullback. Not much for Clifton Rubin. So it sets up a third and short. Updating you on other scores around the country. Akins wrapping them up there. It's funny. So often on Sunday we see the 4-3 in the NFL. And not too often do we see a 3-4 even on Saturdays. But today we see two 3-4 linemen. That's right. In the National Football League, I believe there are only two teams playing the base 3-4 defense. That's Carolina and Pittsburgh. You're seeing it now. Gary Darnell, defensive coordinator for the Longhorns, setting his team up on third and a little more than a yard for Baylor. Only one of six so far. Ford bottled up in the backfield and taken down. Great penetration by the Longhorns. Early in there, Dusty Renfro, he set it up and slowed it down. Terrific look. job right there. Well, if you don't if you don't block Renfro, he better make the tackle. And Baylor did not block it, but there was penetration, which allowed Renfro to run free and make the play. You've got to account for those linebackers in third and short. Mike Adams waiting for the punt. Ty Atterbury from the 30. Great footwork across the 35. Did a good job to take it out across the 36. We'll look now at what's coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Report. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, all the day's scores and highlights. Number two, Ohio State rolled. They have that matchup with Michigan at the end of the year. They look good as well. Yeah, Michigan looked good. Scott Dreisbach played well November 23rd. Could be a similar situation to last season. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Back in Austin, a 21 to 7 lead for the Longhorns. Now can they put some more points on the board with only 316 left in the half? Mike Adams will stay in the game. Starting wide receiver, the all time leading receiver, both yardage and receptions in Longhorn history. That's the script worked so far, partner. Yes, it has. John McAvick is an outstanding designer of plays, uh, well known even throughout the National Football League during his career with the Chiefs and the Dallas Cowboys of designing plays. Now you just have to find the players to execute. Brown going for Matt Davis, who's wide receiver, who did a great job after the stick came by the free safety, Nakia Cody. Super job to hang on to the ball. When that ball is thrown high, you know you're going to take a shot in the ribs, and Matt Davis went up and made the catch knowing he was going to get hit and held on to that one. This is the best field position to start a drive for either team. As Texas started with the ball to their own 37. Now from the 48. Sweep for Priest Holmes. He can't get out of the backfield. Big play defensively. Dwight Johnson over there. He's a redshirt freshman from Waco. More scores around the country. Texas comes out in a quick count and run the pitch, but uh, Johnson was not going to let it happen again. Penetration, blow things up in the backfield, cause negative plays, get him in the passing situations. All those things favor the defense. Baylor has two timeouts remaining. Clock moving inside of two and a half minutes left in the half. See what happens if they utilize one. After second and long now for the Longhorns. They're bringing the blitz, and it's picked up. Brown wanted to go for Fitzgerald. Clutch, clutching Fitzgerald, though, the defensive back or the outside linebacker, Robert Mason, though, so it fell incomplete. Pick up You'll the blitz once again, Ron. Dan Neal, number 69, doing a terrific job there, picking up Jackson exactly where you want to put him. Put him on his back once, go after him again, stay with him, stick and stay. He's going to be hearing that a lot when he gets to the Nash Football League because he's already learned how to do that here at the University of Texas. So now after the incompletion, they didn't have to spend a time out. Big play coming up for the Baylor defense. Third and a little more than 11. The reverse. 
for the wide receiver. McGarity gets the first down. He takes it inside the 40, down to the 39. What a time for a reverse. It, uh, it, it amazes me on third and 11, a known passing situation, you can run the reverse and pick up the first down. Just a terrific play call and well executed. Linemen downfield, the receivers doing their job. But the defense, you really have to account for the reverse in that situation. Shouldn't happen. That is a killer for Baylor. Really is. You got him in the situation you want him in, third and long, and you let him convert with the reverse. And now the opportunity for more points for Texas from the 39 of the Bears. Brown has all day, and he's got Fitzgerald again, the tight end. All the way down to the 13 near the 12. Great protection. That is key to this play right there. Wait, wait, wait for Fitzgerald to open up, and he does. But the key is the offensive line doing a terrific job. And it's not only Dan Neal, it's the whole group up front. You'll feel Fitzgerald coming off the ball. Kind of reminds me of Jay Novacek, the tight end for the Cowboys. Kind of those sweet moves coming across the middle, catching the ball, head down, and pulling for a couple extra yards, and Jay Novacek is one of his favorite players. Matt Fitzgerald already with a couple of touchdown receptions today. Counter, Priest Holmes. Grabbed around the ankles and brought down. Dean Jackson there. This drive started back at the 37. As Texas efficiently chewing up the last three plus minutes of the first half. It's back at the 12, though. No gain on that pickup. The offensive line has been doing an outstanding job of run blocking and pass protection. You know, got the Big Bishop up there and Adams and Feebigger. And, of course, we mentioned Dan Neal a number of times and Jay Humphrey done an outstanding job. So give that old line some credit. Quick count. Offensive penalty coming up. So Brown tried to hurry things. It'll cost him five. Joel, as an old quarterback, you always remember, remember that offensive ball, line. Ball start on the offense. Nothing was in sync on that play. The 12 to outside of the 17. It'll be second down there and 15. Still two timeouts remaining, don't forget, for the Longhorns, just like the Bears, 47 seconds left in the half. Texas right now in great shape by 14. There's place kicker Phil Dawson who has been exceptional this year hitting 13 of his 17 field goal tries. He's yet to have an attempt today and now the fans a little bit upset because the clock is running and it's second and 15 and no sense of urgency for the Longhorns and they have two timeouts remaining. The delay Priest holds to the 10 now they have to stop the clock. They have it. They still haven't stopped it and finally they do. Not very good clock management. Not I good just at said all. it, partner. He got seven on the pickup, but still, it is third and long. Now, while we've got the opportunity, take a look now at some upcoming programming coming your way on ABC. Sunday at 7, 6 Central, ABC goes wild with an adventure double feature. First, double the fun with the roaring television debut of Disney's animated classic, The Lion King. Then, it's double the danger. We can't walk, then we'll crawl. As Alyssa Milano must find the courage to brave Alaska. After The Lion King, Sunday, the only way to spell adventure is ABC. 17 seconds left in the half. Joel Myers, Ron Jaworski, and Steve Atkinson back in Austin, Texas. Texas jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead. Very nonchalant with the way things went in the final minute. You've got to be very careful. You have a 21 to 7 lead, but you got a chance to put more points on the board. The clock management is critical. And of course, John McAvick and his offense, you know, they 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 have made mistakes in the past, their clock management. <laughs> they they got to hope they get some points out here. I think uh, they're subject to that criticism again. Third and seven now from the 10. Fitzgerald, the tight end in motion. Brown has it picked off by Mason. Or Jackson, rather, taking it across the 10. And the Bears come up with a big play. That is the second interception of the afternoon for Dean Jackson. 
He picked up one very early in the game under deflection. Off the hands of the wide receiver, Brian White. Well, Dean Jackson a week ago made 10 tackles. This week he makes the big interception. You can see right there, it looks like James Brown is just eyeballing his wide receiver, Matt Davis, and his eye movement will take the linebacker right into the passing lane. And I'll tell you, Dean Jackson was watching those eyes, and that's the reason he made the interception. Huge play for Banner. Stay within 14 to head to the locker room. Nine seconds left of the half. Gerard Douglas. The final snap it should be of the first 30 minutes of play. And there's the gun. So it reached the intermission in Austin, Texas. A very productive start for the Texas Longhorns, but a pick-me-up on their way to the locker room for the Baylor Bears. Our halftime score, Texas 21, Baylor 7. The University of Texas at Austin, a place that towers in the memory, transforming lives from the very beginning. Classic, timeless, always excellent, always competitive. The University of Texas at Austin, top-ranked degree programs, cutting-edge technology, a community of scholars, working to stay a dream ahead, towering in strength and pride. The University of Texas at Austin. Valvoline Halftime 96 Brought to you by Valvoline The number one choice of America's top mechanics People who know use Valvoline From our New York studios John Saunders and Todd Blackledge Welcome viewers in the Pac-10 and Big 12 We'll get you out to your second half in just a moment But first, a very busy day of college football Let's get to the scores and highlights Beginning with number one Florida Against Georgia, this one used to be a great matchup. No longer 27 to nothing. Danny Werfel with three touchdown passes. Yeah, Werfel looks good. The last time a Steve Spurrier-led Gator team lost to Georgia, 1966, when Steve was the quarterback. He threw three interceptions in the second half on his way to a Heisman Trophy season, and they lost 27 to 10. Yeah, better pacing the sidelines than throwing those passes, <laughs> at least at that point. Oregon State and Arizona State. Take a look at this score. Tim Alexander, 48-yard touchdown run. Arizona State may be looking ahead. Well, Arizona State certainly knows how to win games coming from behind. They've done it all year. They've got a great quarterback in Jake Plummer. He's a leader. I wouldn't count the Sun Devils out of this one. If they win, they will clinch a tie for the Pac-10 title. Colorado and Missouri. Coy Detmer, the question, would he play in this game after the concussion suffered last week? Well, he did. He hooked up with Phil Savoy here, 28-13. to And Eric Neuheisel, whose team struggled at the beginning of this game, was off and running. Dwayne Charrington then two yards out. Makes it a 34-13 game. Coy Detmer with three touchdown passes. Yeah, he looks pretty good. He's very sharp in this ballgame. Missouri was playing him pretty tough early, but right now Colorado distancing themselves from the Tigers. Northwestern and Penn State. Penn State and Joe Paterno, the last team in the Big Ten to beat Northwestern 13 games in two years ago. But Curtis Enos here, 39 yards on the touchdown run, 7-0 Penn State. And Wally Richardson has been much maligned, but a pretty good half here. An excellent half for Wally Richardson. You can see him standing tall in the pocket. He's not shifting his feet. I know what it's like to get booed in this stadium. It happened in my career. Wally Richardson showing a lot of character and guts today. And Joe Juravicious catching the ball. Another big day, two weeks in a row for him. You got booed, but you got your revenge with the national championship. Meanwhile, Steve Schnur is hit. He coughs up the football. Matt Fornadel picks it up, stumbles down to the 20, and the turnovers hurting Northwestern. Northwestern was one of the best teams in the country last year creating turnovers this year or this game three turnovers in the first half all inside their own territory really giving Penn State an advantage in the ball game Aaron Harris with a touchdown run in that game as well UTEP against BYU from his own end zone James Dye takes the second half kickoff and returns it 100 yards with a touchdown BYU takes a 19 to 3 lead James Dye has done this three times in his career, plus a punt return for a touchdown in two years as BYU finally is having a pretty good season. A very good year. BYU, one of three WAC teams that are ranked in the top 25. Them, Wyoming, and Utah all playing good. In the ACC, Virginia beats Duke. Duke's still looking for their first win of the year. Tiki Barber with two touchdown runs. 37 straight games now with at least one interception for Virginia. But take a look at the numbers of Tiki Barber. Tiki Barber, 125 yards in this game. And every game this season, he has been over 100 yards for the Cavaliers. All right, as we mentioned, Tiki Barber with a couple of touchdowns. SMU 
getting blown out by Wyoming, 42 to three. Josh Walworth with three touchdown passes there. Syracuse and West Virginia. Dion Maddox, 72-yard punt return for a touchdown. Syracuse is rolling right now. 21-0 Virginia, or rather West Virginia, perhaps still reeling from losing the last second to Miami last yeah, week. Yeah, they had that game won against Miami last week before the block punt that was returned for a touchdown with under 30 seconds left in the game. Tough game to overcome. And Syracuse, a hot team, has been averaging over 40 points a game in their last four games. All right, Utah against Rice, and Utah's head coach, Ron McBride, facing the sidelines, looking for yet another victory. Chad Richardson pitches to Michael Perry right there at the last second, and he takes it in for the touchdown. Michael Perry also has a punt return for a touchdown as Rice is blowing out Utah 30-10. This would be a big upset, but Rice has been playing very well. They run that wishbone as well, and, and a lot of option teams this year having success. Rice on a little bit of a roll right now. Washington and USC, Brad Otten hooks up with Rodney Sermons. 15 yards on the touchdown as USC gets on the board with the first touchdown. 7-3 to was the score at that point. And it's now 10 to 3 as the game has gone to halftime. Cincinnati and Southern Miss, Lee Roberts, two touchdown passes. Iowa beats Illinois 31 to 21. Illinois 0 and 4 against top 25 teams this year. Kansas and Iowa State, Troy Davis with a big day around 200 yards, as was June Henley. But Henley had the three touchdown runs, and that's the major difference in this one. Yeah, it really was. And you take a look at Henley's numbers. June Henley was in Glenn Mason's doghouse last week, didn't play. He was suspended after being arrested back on the field today and really made up for it with an outstanding effort today. Army remains perfect, 8-0 and zero on the season. Their quarterbacks, 10 of 10 passing for 180 yards and three touchdowns. That's Ronnie Makeda and Adam Thompson. Arizona and Cal, Keith Smith with a touchdown run and a touchdown pass and Pat Farns three touchdown passes, 21-14. Florida, meanwhile, Danny Werfel with yet another touchdown pass, 34-0. Back with more right after this. Welcome to Valvoline Halftime 96. John Saunders alongside Todd Blackledge. Let's get to the scores and highlights. Beginning with the number two team in the nation, the Ohio State Buckeyes. This is a Billy the Buckeye working up a sweat here, getting his team pumped up. And it worked for Andy Katzenmoyer. The freshman takes this one. It's an interception for a touchdown. The first time number 45 has scored a touchdown for the Buckeyes since 1975 after Archie Griffin's number was retired. Yeah, I'll tell you, Andy Katzenmoyer does not look like a true freshman. This time last year, he was playing for Westerville South High School, a great linebacker for the Buckeyes. Pepe Pearson with two touchdown runs, and Jim Wacker now has lost five straight after opening three and zero. Nebraska and Oklahoma, John Blake, well, he knew his team was overmatched, but he tried to get him pumped up just the same. Eric Moore then is intercepted by Ralph Brown, who then takes off 84 yards. Looks like it's going to be an easy touchdown, but he's nearly grabbed and a good block at the end of this play. Frees him up, takes it in 24-0 at that point. This game wound up 73-21. to Scott Frost with three touchdown passes. Well, Nebraska doing it in all offense and defense. And since they lost to Arizona State, they have outscored their opposition 313 to 50. Average margin of victory, you see right there, 43.8. Nebraska really has it in gear right now. That's why they're in the hunt for the national championship just the same. Tennessee and South Carolina, Peyton Manning had one bad half this year. Everything else has been pretty good. Manning goes 48 yards to Andy McCullough here. 14 to 7, a tremendous arm on this young. Yeah, and you can see he just flicked that one. I mean, he was moving in the pocket, just flicked his wrist, made the perfect throw. He has a great feel for the game. Here you see him, the nice touch pass on the fade, perfect position for the receiver. Yeah, Joey can't haul that one in as Tennessee rolls over South Carolina. 31 to 14, and here's a look at Peyton Manning's numbers. 362 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, he really, again, has a great feel for the game. He does a lot of audibling on the field. He's like having another coach out there really understands the game and makes defenses pay when they take chances. NC State against North Carolina, the game being played in Chapel Hill. And Leon Johnson had a terrific day. 40 yards he takes this one after he fields the punt. And no one can catch him. Takes it for the touchdown. 26-7 at that point. 52-20 was the final. Chris Keldorf, three touchdown passes. But take a look at the day Leon Johnson had. Yeah, he did a little bit of everything. Running the football, catching it, and as a return man, four touchdowns. Everybody knows North Carolina has a great defense, but their offense much more diverse this year. New offensive coordinator Greg Davis, the guy who gets credit for that. Michigan State and Michigan in the Big Ten. Lloyd Carr, a little snow in Ann Arbor today. 19 seconds left in the half. Scott Dreisbach to Jer Jeremy Tooman, rather. He takes it in from 15 yards out. 
his second touchdown reception of the day. Dreisbach had four touchdown passes. Threw the ball very well. Michigan State, four turnovers, two of them right in the last 20 seconds of the first half. Michigan converted both of them into touchdowns, and then they built a cushion and then just protected it at the second half. I mean, they looked very good in that matchup with Ohio State still to come. Notre Dame was really on the road. They had to go over across the water alongside Navy. Navy's used to doing that, however. They were in Dublin, Ireland, and thus the Irish music. Chris McCoy is hit by Corey Miner. Fumbles. Ronaldo Wynn scoops it up. 33 yards of the touchdown, and everything's coming up green for the Irish, 54-27. Notre Dame's defense couldn't stop Bo Morgan running the option from Air Force, but with Chris McCoy today, he came in averaging 122 yards per game, minus 13 yards rushing today. Mark Edwards with three touchdowns. Miami blows out Temple. This one is actually close for a little while. Ryan Clement with two touchdown passes for Temple, eight consecutive losses since they opened the season with a win. Southwest Louisiana against Virginia Tech. Jim Druckenmiller with two touchdown passes. They blow them out 47 to 16. Western Michigan, the woes continue for Al Moldy. His team, this is a home game now, Todd. His team gets stuck in traffic on the way to the game. They have to start the game 20 minutes late and 38 to nothing. Looks like they never showed up at all for that game. Dartmouth against Harvard, a low scoring affair. Six to three was the final here. Dartmouth now seven and oh, four and oh in the Ivy League. They're in first place. One of the reasons, Columbia came up with their first loss of the season today, 14 to 11. Princeton pulls this one up. Well, Princeton won the Ivy League last year. They get their first win in conference today, a big win for the Tigers. The Citadel against Marshall, Eric Kresser, with three touchdown passes to Randy Moss, as those guys who transferred in from the big-name schools, Florida State, Notre Dame, look pretty good in Florida as well. All right, stick around. We'll have more of Valvoline Halftime 96 in your second half, also still to come. Let's stick around. Valvoline Halftime 96, brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. The second half is coming up, but first, here's what we have on tap on ABC's College Football next week. Northwestern hoping to make it to a second consecutive Rose Bowl. They'll face Iowa. Air Force and Army, what a terrific year it's been for the service academies. Washington State and UCLA in the Pac-10. Clemson and Virginia in the ACC. Texas A&M and Baylor as the Big 12 scrambles for their bowl positions. Check local listings for the game available in your area and on pay-per-view. And as usual, if you missed a score, log into College Football Today on America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. And we'll be back with this message and a word from your ABC stations. Position one, yes or no, the discussion Saturday on Tell It Like It Is. Welcome back once again to Austin. Beautiful day for football. Game time temperature just around 60 degrees. Joel Myers along with Ron Jaworski and Steve Atkinson. And a 14-point lead for Texas over Banner. So we look at some of the halftime numbers. It could be a lot worse as you look at those numbers for the Baylor Bears. Fortunate to be down by only 14, Ron. Yeah, the big number there for Texas, 340 total yards, 197 yards in the passing game. And certainly James Brown has made some big plays. The one mistake he made at the end of the half, the interception, could hurt him. Banner remembers the tight end Pat Fitzgerald from last year, a 70-yarder against him, backbreaker. First touchdown, they go to the tight end once again, this time for 48 yards. Well, you see the pump fake to the outside to freeze the safety, and you get single coverage with Artmore down there, down the hole, and if Fitzgerald make the catch, he's had three receptions in the first half for 93 yards and two touchdowns. He's been outstanding. Scarborough back in, along with the wide receiver, the running back Mitchell. Doesn't make any difference, though. So on the touchback, first and 10 at the 20 for the Longhorns. will have the ball to start the second half. Brown, an effective one despite the two interceptions. The second really telegraphed that ball. Yeah, he was uh, looking right down the hole. And, of course, the linebacker, Dean Jackson, just read his eyes, stayed right with his movement, and made the interception. The first interception uh, was a ball that should have been caught, and he gets, uh, unfortunately, credited with an interception or discredited. Balance in the backfield between Mitchell and Williamson. One of the real big plays. The touchdown reception of Ricky Williams on a screen play. And that was thrown from uh, Richard Walton. Yes. The backup quarterback got some time in the first half. Brown starts the second half. 
Another deep drop going for the bundle, looking for Davis, and it's just knocked away from Matt Davis, the senior from Fort Worth. Three around him, and it still almost found it what found its way to number 86. Well, Anderson there along with Artmore. Artmore should have made the play for an interception. They went to play action to try to hold the safety in there and get the wide receiver out over the top. Artmore did a nice job of not getting sucked into the play action fake, maintained his deep coverage responsibility, probably should have made the interception. He joined us a little bit late. Man are fortunate to be down only by 14 because of an interception. Second of the game with their linebacker, Dean Jackson, at the end of the half. Looked like it'd be at least 17 or 21, the advantage. As they wrap up the running back, Embra making the play. Gain of only a little more than a yard. Call it two as we check in with Steve Atkinson. Steve? The mistake by Brown just there before the break of this ball game. James Brown has had some problems making mistakes like that. Interceptions. The linebacker John McVick told me just made an outstanding play. The problem is the Longhorns have had some problems going back to the last game with Colorado in the red zone. They really needed that touchdown. That could be the problem. Also look for Richard Walton coming up here in the second half as well. Back to you. All right Steve. And a third and eight now for the Longhorns from their own 22. The deep out. Just out of the reach of Wayne McGarrity. So three and out for Texas to start the second half after a shaky ending to the first half for James Brown. Well, they had the, the, the kind of coverage they would like. They had Artmore on McGarrity, which you would think they're your safety covering a wide receiver to give you that advantage. But in that particular situation, number 24, Rodney Artmore, did a terrific job of covering one on one. Elite Muhammad going back for the return for Banner. They should get outstanding field position for their first drive of the second half. And the second punt so far for Schultz. Came in with a 42-yard average. They're after him, and they get to it. It's blocked by Banner. So Banner with great field position there after the block by Hamilton. Malcolm Hamilton, the senior from Odessa. Had a feeling special teams would be a factor. Well, we've uh, chronicled we chronicle the problems with Texas penalties turnovers and poor special teams execution and we're getting a little bit of all of it today right up the middle untouched just can't happen in special teams execution that's a free ball right now so Hamilton with a big play it's inside the 18 officially first and 10 from the 17 yard line for Banner first time they started with the ball in Texas territory and what a way to start the second half Dexter for the single set he's in now for Douglas he had a great first down he gets it inside the 15 and hangs on to the 13 for a gain of a little more than four for Dexter Ford slight injury to the starting tailback Gerard Douglas and all of a sudden Dexter Ford in the spotlight he really responded in the first half as Ford Rush for better than 80, almost 90 yards, 87 yards on 11 carries, an eight yard average just about. He is running the ball very effectively, and I'm watching this Texas defense. They are really pursuing, they're setting themselves up for a reverse or a misdirection play. Second and six. Going for the corner for Muhammad, and almost taken away for the pick by Taji Allen. That was a jump ball. He wanted. Pigras, number 11, not Muhammad, number one. Well, you'll see Pigras bumping in all the way down there along with Allen. It is a free ball. It'd be nice to have about a 6'5 guy jumping up in there to get that rather than 5'11. But uh, hey, you got to try to make that play. They didn't execute it at that particular time. I wouldn't be surprised here. Spread them out and see the run. Pigras coming over to the wide side of the field. They doubled up on the short side. Muhammad the motion man on third and six. Flags on the play and you can call it third and 11. Dead ball foul coming up against the offensive unit. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Still third down. Let's see if they stay with the three wide receivers set once again. Now that it's back outside of the 18, it'll be third and 11 for Baylor. Penalties have hurt six for 44 in assessments thus far. We've got to capitalize with some points in there. Place kicker, don't forget, missed a couple of field goals. The 32 yarder hit well. 47, though, was a dead duck hook. 
Opening two minutes of the second half. Third and 11. They want to the screen, and it's batted away. It was never available. Cedric Woodard made the play, a true freshman from Sweeney, Texas. So now a huge field goal coming up for Kyle Atterbury. He's missed two already today. He is two of six on the season. Screen just wasn't there, Ron. It wasn't there. It was well defensed by Tex. The pressure came. He was throwing that ball away. He would not have gotten a completion. That was the best thing to do. Now they've got to come up with points. After the big play on special teams by Hamilton to block the punt, they've got to get at least three. Miss from 32. Also 47. Still, he's got the wind in his back, and this is going to be a 35-yard attempt. And Atterbury finally converted. Yes, just got it in. The far side upright. Relief for Kyle Atterbury and Banner. They do capitalize on the big play by special teams, and now it's an 11-point ball game. After two misses already, Kyle Atterbury, he so desperately needed this one. 35 yards away, he'll take it. The Baylor Bears get the first point to the second half. We've got a ball game. That was a big kick. You know, they got the turnover and they got points out of it. That'll really motivate you. Mitchell back deep for Texas along with Scarborough. This is Ty Atterbury now. And Mitchell is going to bring it out. He won't make it back, though, to the 20. Dropped immediately at the 16. By Lamont Moore, reserve wide receiver. So Texas deep in their own territory with a flag down to the play. Let's see if that flag takes them half the distance to the goal. Moore made a terrific play. It's against Baylor. Don't see that too often on the return. I think there was a little extra curricular activity after the play. That ball, personal foul on the kicking team, me. 15 yard penalty, first down. That doesn't mean much, does it? Instead of the 16 in a hole, now breathing room at the 31. Head coach Chuck Reedy wants an explanation. He's got an explanation of his own right now, as you can tell. And I don't blame him. Huge flag against the Bears. They have hurt themselves. Yes, they have. Chuck's still in his ear. Split backfield to start this series. Williams and Mitchell. Mitchell counter doesn't fool him. Knifing through Roderick Kidding, their big nose tackle out of Sugarland, Texas. Three year starter for the Bears. To loss of a couple. Richard Walton back in at quarterback. They go with the misdirection once again, the counter play. The one drive Walt was in, they went for a touchdown. Didn't look like a real clean exchange. No, the it, it, it either. was not clean and defensive penetration. To stop the running game, you've got to get penetration. Baylor was able to do that on that play. So the second series for Walt. He had one series that resulted in a touchdown to the first half. Movement of the offensive line. That'll knock Texas five yards back again. So both teams are a little bit sloppy now. Yep, yep. Ball start on the offense. Still second down. Ron, does it stop the momentum of a quarterback like James Brown when you bring in a wall? Oh, I think so. You know, Brown was playing well. Uh, he had the one poor throw before the half that hurt his football team. You know, you nice stand on the sidelines for, you know, a couple plays or a series. Sure, it does take a little bit off. Second and long now. Second and a little more than 16. Walton with that deep drop. Going for the bundle. Looking for McGarrity. And it's barely poked away. What a play by George McCullough. Timed it well. McGarrity was a couple of yards behind him. George McCullough having an outstanding game. You can see the arm of Richard Walton there. He laid that thing out about 60 yards. And it may have just been a hair behind the streaking wide receiver. 
Walton lets it go to the deep post pattern. McCullough, great timing, great anticipation, and knocks it away from McGarity. Look at it from a, another angle. Boy, that's terrific work. McCullough is Baylor's best defensive player, and he's playing that way today. Out of the shotgun, third and 16. Walton in trouble. Free ball at the 15. Will Baylor get it? Yes, they will. And it's Dean Jackson making the big play already. He's had two interceptions today. Coy took it away. Jackson recovers it. Celebrate. You deserve it. Never felt the heat, did he? Well, actually, the offensive line, for the most part, did a good job. You've got to anticipate the pressure. Make your read downfield. you got to have that clock ticking in your mind. Okay, they're going to get to me. He sets it about 12 yards, a deep drop. Ready to deliver the ball. There comes the fumble, and it's clearly a fumble. Right now, the Achilles heels of Texas is coming up again. The turnovers, the breakdowns on special teams. It'll be interesting to see right now if Baylor can capitalize and get right back in this ballgame. Not that they're not in it right now at 21 to 10. But old momentum is now on the side of the Baylor Bears. So one linebacker sets it up. Glenn Boy, he's here in it for the man who recovered it. Dean Jackson, and it's at the 16. They started their last drive with the Texas 17. Couldn't pick up a yard on three snaps. And they finally get into the end zone. Dexter Ford up the middle, bangs his way inside the 10, all the way down to the 7. Right now, Baylor has momentum clearly. Power football right there. They're going against a defense that is giving up over 200 yards a game on the ground. They gave up a lot in that first half. They're coming right back at them with power football. The offensive line for Baylor is just driving them backwards. Three and a half minutes in the second half. Fortunes have certainly changed in this game. All of a sudden, it could become a four-point ball game in a big hurry. It's outside of the seven, and it's second and a couple. It'll be the up man. And he's got a first down, Sean Washington, the senior from Waco. First and goal to the four. Now, what a momentum builder for Baylor if they put it in here. The defensive coordinator, Gary Darnell, has to feel the heat after the turnover. And the breakdown of the special teams play. His defensive unit came in, came up big on the last series. Right. Gary Darnell is now up in the box for most of the season. He was down on the sideline. Last week against Colorado, he moved up in the box, get a different perspective. And, uh, you know, they felt it worked. But right now, they need some people to make some tackles on that front seven. Again, the fullback powering his way. Washington all the way down inside the one. You know, it's the coach's responsibility to put players in a position to make a play. And I think Gary Darnell does a good job of doing that, but the players have not been making the plays when they're put in that position. Texas at home in the last 23 meetings, 22 meetings between these two teams. 19-2-1 against the Baylor Bears. The only two wins coming in 89 and 91. Second and goal. Ruben in fourth combination. Ruben this time. He's denied. So he went with Washington in the backfield as well. The trips. It'll be third and goal, just inches away. Kind of went to their elephant backfield, their big backs with uh, Washington and Ruben in there. Dexter Ford on the sideline. No, nope, Dexter Ford is in the backfield. He's in a wing set. Ruben. It'll be Ruben diving. He's in. Touchdown, Baylor. Brand new game for the Bears. They discussed it for a moment with the referee, like there was the possibility of a call, but there wasn't a flag. So now the extra point coming. Right angle right here, the line search coming off the ball. Sean Washington, number 48 out of the wing position, leads up to the inside. Coming in motion across the formation. Power football right here. You get down there, again, it's a man on a man. Create a seam and get it in the end zone. Wham play work that time. Right now, Baylor dominating in the trenches. Kyle Atterbury for the extra point. He pulls it. It is no good. He hooked it again, just like one of his field goal drives. 
So it stays a five point lead for Texas. 937 left in the third. 21 16 Longhorns. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you this afternoon by Ford Motor Company, where quality is job one. And United Airlines, and it's more than 50,000 employee owners. Come fly our friendly skies. Joel Myers, Ron Jaworski, Steve Atkinson, back in Austin. Some questions about going for that extra point the way they did, the conventional style, or going for two, Ron? You go for two. You're down five points. You go for the two points, and you make it. You cut it to three. Even if you kick the extra point, of course, uh, Atterbury is really struggling right now. But if you make the extra point, you're still down four and more than a field goal behind. I think it was clearly a situation where you go for two. You may say there's a lot of time left in the game, but Boy, with momentum on your side, Baylor playing well, to be only a field goal away, I think would be very important. And especially that momentum they'd also feed off of if they collected the two-point conversion. Right, and the difference between five and four at this point in the game is nothing. You want to get within one score, and that score would be a field goal. Well, we thought we'd see James Brown because Walton came in for that one series in the first half. Promptly went back to the sideline. Brown took over again for the rest of the half, but Richard Walton is going to stay in there. The sophomore from Bay City, Texas. Come in into the game. He had 51 attempts on the year, hitting on 61% with a touchdown and an interception. Runs Priest Holmes out of the backfield. Sets it up for Mike Adams. Blocky wasn't there. Adams had to do it on his own as his lineman who jumped out. Jay Humphrey missed the block, but he still took it for a little more than eight, almost nine to the 29. If Jay Humphrey gets the kickout block, he got the potential for a big play. He did not get the kickout block. We'll look at the isolation here. Here comes a kickout block, not made. Consequently, not as not as positive play as that uh, that should have gotten. Second in the yard. Williams, Mitchell in the backfield. Mitchell. Can he turn the corner? No. He's cut off. Great pursuit down the line. It was Curtis Henderson, the strong safety, along with Matt Anderson. Showing some speed in that Baylor defensive backfield. Well, Matt Anderson does have great speed. But Henderson does a terrific job. That's a linebacker making that play. On second and short, again, puts him in a tough third down situation. So now third and a couple after a loss of a yard in the run by Mitchell. Misdirection, Williams banging, spinning, barely gets it across the 30. He was denied until he had that final spin move. First down, Texas. They needed it so desperately. Now, Texas has to get back to, to what they did well in that first half. That's pound the football. And then the passing game came off of that as all of a sudden the safeties for Baylor started getting nosy, playing up the line of scrimmage. It came with the play action and got Fitzgerald behind the safeties for the big points. It's almost the big plays. amazing they got away from the run because Baylor came into the game fourth worst in the nation at stopping the run. Texas early in the game, so effective between the two tackles. First down outside of the 30. Walton. Adams with a diving grab for another first down. Looked like the ball was overthrown, but Mike Adams with a great recovery move. Well, catches like this uh, make you believe he's their leading wide receiver, which he is. The throw is a little high and a little wide, but look at that on the fingertips. Gets actually both feet down in bounds, showing great athleticism on this play. This is a terrific football player. Disbelief from the quarterback, George McCullough. First down outside of the 41. Mitchell breaking tackles into the secondary. He's got another first down. He's out of the 45 of Baylor. Balance on offense, Joel. We could watch uh, 10 games a weekend, and uh, the, the one thing that'll stand out, the teams that win those football games get a good mix. They run the ball, and they throw the ball for good balance. Well, everybody has been running the ball this year against the Baylor Bears, but for some reason, <laughs> yeah. Texas got away from what they were doing so well in the first couple of series. And you have to mix in the pass, which is, you know, when they threw the ball out to Adams, that'll keep the defense on their heels a little bit and not allow those safeties to get nosy. From the 45, buried is the quarterback, Walt, knifing through Donnie Embra before he could set up for that flanker screen. 
senior from Texas, transfer from Northeast Oklahoma Community College. In fact, a former Juco All-American. Huge play. Oh, he was shot out of a cannon. I mean, they, they must just completely missed a block on him because they had the screen set up. It was kind of a, a fake the toss and throw the ball out. You'll see Walton fake the toss, set. Ember right on his back, never had a chance. It looked like Adams, number 79, was uh, to hold him accountable. Well, you can't have those kinds of mistakes. Get your quarterback killed. Loss of six. Walton has plenty of time. And Adams all bottled up, and it's almost intercepted. After Adams thought the ball was going to be overthrown and basically gave up on the play, Matt Anderson almost came up with an interception. Can't quit, can you, partner? Ooh. Threw that right into the coverage, Joe. I mean, that uh, that was kind of a jump ball, and anyone could have got that one. But you get yourself in those long yarded situations. But Walton takes a hit right there. This is thrown right into the coverage. You got the three white jerseys around the red jersey. Those are uh, those numbers favor the defense. So now a critical third down coming up for the Longhorns, leading by only five inside of seven minutes left in the third. At one point, if you joined us late, Texas led it 21 to nothing. Now they're looking at third and 16 outside of their own 49. Baylor has been beaten on the blitzes. I don't think we'll see a blitz in this situation. And we will not. They're going to go straight zone. Walton finds it in stride. Mike Adams inside the 25 down to the 20. So the all-time leading receiver in Texas history, they go for the go-to guy. And they go with the zone coverage, and they hit the void in the middle of the zone. The key, protection. Give the quarterback time to go through his reading progression. You'll see the slot receiver run deep to clear out the middle. Then you'll see Adams, number 83, sneaking back underneath in the void in the zone. Perfect throw. It all starts with protection. He had plenty of that. Does everything well. One more TD. And he becomes number one in touchdowns. Ricky Williams, forgotten man so far in the second half. Sliding through, going the low routes. Inside the 15, down to the 11. Nine on that pickup. Cody Henderson combining for the stop of the secondary. Mitchell did so well towards the tail end of the first half. Williams didn't get that many opportunities to carry the ball. Syracuse pounding West Virginia at halftime at Morgantown. No surprise there. Virginia Tech solid again. And that was the Thursday night matchup. That was a surprise. Second and a yard. Williams, huge hole. Down to the five, first and goal, Longhorns. Excellent play, play calling right now by Gene Dahlquist. He goes down here with a double tight end, two wide receiver, one back set. By having two tight ends, it prevents any leakage, any penetration. You get the man and a man, push him up the field. Nice formation variation in this situation. Only completion of this drive since deep in their own territory was third and 16 when they had to throw the ball. And if you otherwise, don't have a, between the two tackles. Yeah, and otherwise, you know, you don't have a pass rush, which is really what made that play. That's what's killing Baylor on defense. Last three games have only scored eight touchdowns. That includes this afternoon. First and goal outside of the five. Williams in trouble. Williams bouncing it outside. Touchdown, Texas. You will never see a better run than that. <laughs> Incredible. Wow. Yards after contact. Damn. Bill Earl, the Damn. real deal. And got off of the pass. Oh, boy. Penetration. I mean, three. I heard the pop up here. We're a long way from the field. Just a wonderful individual effort by Ricky Williams. It's his second score of the afternoon. Earlier today, got his first touchdown reception of his career on a screen pass that went 46 yards. Now, Phil Dawson for the point after. And some breathing room for the Texas Longhorns at home. Incredible to come to the near side, have the ability to get it back the way he did. Let's take a look at this. You won't see a finer run if you watch a football game every weekend. One, two, three, four Baylor defenders have a shot at him. Breaks the tackle. There's the strength. Now comes the speed. The little juke, the final move he put on Artmore wasn't wow. too shabby. Wow, that is impressive. 
You'll see it from the end zone camera here. Great penetration by the Baylor defense. They got to stop. There's a double hit. Three, four guys. Now he breaks outside. Puts the, old, puts the okey doke there on Artmore. Dives into the end zone. How does he get away from Kenny, though, oh. and Arroyo, the first two? It seemed like they were all over him. Gene Dahlquist. Great coaching. <laughs> <laughs> great coaching. Isn't that beautiful? Good call, right? <laughs> great players make you a great coach. <laughs> so an 80-yard drive finishes off with a phenomenal five-yard run. Anything but five yards on that run by Ricky Williams. <laughs> they didn't block anybody. Touchdown. And the lead now 28 to 16 and even dozen for the Texas Longhorns with 521 left in the third. Stockton ready to kick it away. It'll be Elijah Perkins back deep. The young man who broke through last week so effectively had 142 yards against Iowa State a true freshman. He's dangerous look out. They're going to go with a short one again. It'll be Dexter Ford from the 18. And Ford breaking tackles. He's all the way to the 32. So great field position for Baylor. On their first or making the third possession of the second half. Don't forget, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern. We're at Iron Grades back on ABC, 11th ranked Northwestern, battling Iowa. Air Force going up against Army. Washington State will take on UCLA while ACC rivals are clashing. Clemson meeting Virginia and Baylor. Hosting the Aggies of Texas A&M. So check your local listings for the game on your ABC station. The game's available as well from your cable operator all next Saturday. Dexter Ford got a little nicked on that play. The uh, trainer's looking at him over on the sideline. Alfred finding the H-back. The fullback's got it. Sean Washington. We've seen him as an H-back, a motion man. He's got the size of a tight end at 6'1", 230. The senior from Waco takes it for a first down to the 44. Terrific play by Alfred. He comes out on the naked. In other words, he's all alone out on the perimeter. The linebacker is right in his face. He kind of whirls the ball around to the, uh, the back out on the flat. Sean Wash, who takes up the field for the first down. But give all the credit to Jermaine Alfred for getting that pass off. A little sidearm action. Whatever it takes. <laughs> first down. Alfred throwing it behind his intended target, Darius Thompson, the sophomore from Cedar Hill, Texas. And let's check in real quickly with Steve Atkinson. Steve? Thanks a lot, Joel. In conjunction with Parents Weekend, the uh, university also inducted seven new members into the Longhorn Hall of Honor. One of those members, Mark Brooks, who's had a, a heck of a year on the PGA Tour, right? Well, thank you. Yes, it's been a great year. And uh, it's, it's nice to get a little break get down here and receive a very prestigious honor. Talk about your first PGA Championship this year. Well, now that I've, I've actually seen it a couple times, I get more nervous watching it on tape than when I was actually in it. But uh, it, it means a lot to me. I, I grew up under PGA professionals. Uh, they were kind of all my second fathers, and uh, I'm proud to have won their event. Talk about this game here today. You look worried there for a minute, but now things are looking a little bit better. I'm still a little worried. Uh, you know, with Sean Mitchell and a couple of those other backs, I don't know if I'd let the ball see the light of the day. And uh, I think they got it under control now. They can just kind of put a defensive stand on. All right, thanks a lot. Mark Brooks, 107, inducted into the Longhorn Hall of Honor this weekend. Back upstairs to you guys. And you look at the seven inductees that went in. Jerry Gray had a great career in the NFL with the Los Angeles Rams. Jim Bertelson, not a bad running back for the Rams as well. Well, one of my old teammates and was up here a few moments ago and said hello to us. Uh, Jim played with me uh, in the mid-70s with the Rams. Uh, had a terrific uh, career here at uh, Texas. Michael Johnson injured on that last play, the right tackle. We talked about him at the top of the telecast. Maybe the best offensive lineman for Baylor. That's a huge blow. Perkins, shooter bugging his way into the secondary. He's got a first down. I mentioned the young man, a true freshman from Port Arthur. Got 142 yards and only 21 carries last week. Chris Carter making the stop along with Taji Allen. This Baylor team just keeps coming after you. I mean, if it's not Douglas, uh, if it's not Ford, they come in with Perkins now. And boy, great little stutter move to get to the outside. Cuts it back to the inside. Well, the guy has great running instincts. You cannot coach that type of running. Blocking downfield, Darius Thompson. That's football right there. When your receivers are getting involved in the running game, that's a football player. The reverse, Khalif Muhammad needs five. Can he get it on yes. this play? No. It looked like he was going to get it to the 43. He only needs five to become the first Baylor Bear 
in school history to pick up better than a thousand yards receiving kick returns and running the football and Gray Mosier played it very well the numbers coming in first time they tried to get him the ball on the ground and only a yard on that pickup 996 and counting for Khalif <laughs> Muhammad I thought they'd run that play the first play of the game and get it over with he had it he wanted okay. more though <laughs> that's right Second and nine. Perkins between the tackles. Not much running room there. To the 41 for a couple. Brought down by Dwight Kirkpatrick. Texas came with what is called a run blitz in that situation. Their linebackers attack the gap to stop the runs. Now, if Baylor recognized that a little quicker, they will throw the ball to the outside where they would have one-on-one -on -one coverage with their wide receivers. So that Pac-10 score into their ABC regional game. Washington with a five-point lead over USC. Right now, Washington, as far as the Pac-10 race is concerned, basically the only team with an opportunity to catch Arizona State. Chris Higgins leaving the field. Well, he's been banged up all year before that guy has his heart as big as his body. Play action for Alfred. As a man, Muhammad, he's got a first down. And Muhammad loses the football. At the 26, Texas takes over. Khalif Muhammad fighting for the extra yardage. Trey Thomas, the strong safety with the recovery. Must have clumped him with that cast. You'll see it right here. Muhammad fighting for the extra yards. Avoids one tackle. The second guy's wrapping him up. He breaks that tackle. The backside hit. Jarred the ball loose. The extra effort hurt his football team in that situation. But give him credit for trying. The senior from right here in Austin, Trey Thomas, with recovery, but a big poke by Dusty Renfro to force it all. You'll see Dusty Renfro, number 46, right in the middle of your screen, hustling downfield, making the play, jarring the ball loose. There it is. Everybody's fighting for it. But Dusty Renfro, getting down the field, chasing from behind, created that turnover. So the Longhorns get it back, leading 28-16, 241. Left in the third, Ricky Williams battles his way across the 30 to the 31 for a gain of four. So we check in with John Saunders. John? Joel, it's time for the Burger King College Football Play of the Day. Oklahoma against Nebraska. Eric Moore back to pass. Ralph Brown picks it off. And then he takes off 84 yards when he gets to the end zone for the touchdown in a 73-21 win for Nebraska. Back to you, Joel. All right, John. For those of us that grew up in the Midwest, that's still a strange score to see on the Sooners' home field. Sean Mitchell getting the block to the sideline. He's got a first down to the 45. Joel, I guess back in New York, they haven't seen uh, Ricky Williams' touchdown run yet. That may be the play of the day. <laughs> It was only five yards officially. He traveled a lot further, though. Dan Neal with a good block downfield for Mitchell. We talked about Neal before. The senior right guard, Lombardi, and Hodlin Trophy candidate. Beautiful block that time for Sean Mitchell. Well, he's quick. He's quick. Okay, our next option is going to be go to the defensive conversations continue on the Longhorn sideline. First down, Texas. Mitchell across the 46 for a yard. Dean Jackson corralling him. You need a lasso with these two running backs. Mitchell and Ricky Williams. Dean Jackson is a, a very active linebacker. Boy, he just reads real quick and, and, and just hits the hole. The guy is just a, you have to have a nose to play that position. You, you got to smell the ball carrier coming. He's able to do that. Had 10 tackles last week and is having another big day today. Unbelievable afternoon for a linebacker. He's got two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Walton. With flags down in the play, goes down across the midfield strike. Charles Foster in on that stop. We'll find out about the flag zone. So Walton has stayed in there. Third consecutive series as opposed to going back to James Brown, who had the first series of the second half, but they went three and out with a punt, the Longhorns. Yeah, Coach Makovich said he wanted to give him some playing time. I'm surprised he's given him three consecutive series here in the second half. You know, with really the ball game uh, very tight. 
but you never know when you're going to need your backup quarterback somewhere down the road, and he wants to have him prepared. That's smart coaching. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penna. Second down. Second down over. Take the mark off instead of third and five from the 50. We'll take it back inside the 42 and make it second and 13. Ohio State with another strong day. Michigan now two and two over the last four against Michigan State and Northwestern on their way to the first conference loss. Well, with good protection, hitting his running back, first catch of the day for Gerard Coleman, the junior from Fort Worth. He's knocked out at the 48. Robert Mason, the linebacker, in on the hit. Nice job by Walton. He looked up the field. He had the curl pattern at about 20 yards. It wasn't there. You go to your second read in the progression. You're back in the flat. He did a nice job. You don't want to get too greedy on that second long. He's always got third down to come back. Just take a little piece of it. Now you're in a normal situation, third and six. Some tight games going on this afternoon. In the Pac-10. Cal with a touchdown lead late over Arizona. Huge play for the Baylor Bears defensive unit. Third and seven from the 48. Walton has time again, and his receiver broke into the outside. Matt Davis when he threw it to the inside, so breakdown of communication there. Yeah, he had the man coverage on the outside. Uh, again, Baylor came with the blitz. So they have been beaten on the blitz that time. The secondary did a nice job of staying within their coverage scheme. John McAvitt not very happy on that uh, situation there because they have been successful against the blitz when they've gotten their receivers singled up. Muhammad will wait for the punt for Mark Schultes. Looks like they're coming after him again. They've already got one today. They are after him again, and it's blocked again. It'll go out of bounds at the 22. It looked like it was Nakia Cody who got his hand on the ball. Cody with a big play. That's a wow right there. After you have one block, you ought to have that special teams there huddling up on the sideline, going over every possible blocking scheme and rush scheme. Here again, you'll see they get penetration from the outside and leakage up the inside. You got a couple guys in there. Actually, four guys are in there. Cody and Anderson right there on top of it. And it was Nakia Cody. That's a jailbreak. Bears right where they want to be. Plenty of time left. Still 14 seconds left in the third quarter, and they've got it first down at the Texas 22. It's the third time they started with the ball in Texas territory and deep in Texas territory out of four second half possessions. Dexter four sliding off tackle inside the 20 down to the 18. Getting four on first down where he's met by the free safety Chris Carter. You have to capitalize. They got a 35 yard field goal by Atterbury the first time they took it away from Texas on that block punt. That was in the first two minutes of the third quarter. Then when they had it to the Texas 16 they finally got into the end zone but they missed their extra points as Bradley Domo is down the tight end. And we're four ticks away from the fourth quarter, which has been the demise of the Longhorns this season. They have lost so many games in the fourth quarter. Started with the Notre Dame game right here. Don't forget tonight on ABC. See the luminaries of the pro figure skating world and sparkling performances. Former world champions Chrissy Yamaguchi, Katarina Vett, Dorothy Hamilton, Kurt Browning highlight the competition. Don't miss their dramatic conclusion of the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Championships. And the romance will continue on an all-new episode of Relativity that is all tonight at 8, 7 Central, here on ABC. Could be a very interesting fourth quarter. All season long, the Texas Longhorns have not been able to finish up what they've started. Fourth 15 minutes have really crushed their chances as they came into the game with a 3-4 and four record. We'll see now if they can withstand the final 15 minutes of regulation today. They lead it as we get ready for the fourth in Austin, 28 to 16. Cover investigates HISD Thursday at 10. Huge 
huge opportunity to start the fourth quarter for the Banner Bears. Get them going. They're ready on the field from the 18. It is second and six for the Bears. They're down by a dozen. Dexter Ford inside the 15 to the 14. Shy of the first down by two. We'll see what they do on third down when we come back after we join John Saunders. John. Joel Washington in USC. It's fourth down at the 45. And they don't punt. They snap it to Cam Kessel, who takes off 20 yards, gets it down to the 25, and it leads to a Corey Dillon one-yard touchdown run, his ninth touchdown in his last three games, 15-10, Washington. Thanks, John. Gutsy call by Jim Lambright and the Huskies. Quick pitch. Gets the first down and then some. Touchdown, Banner and Dexter Ford. Baylor went with a quick huddle, an outstanding call right there, and he went into the end zone untouched. An alert coaching call by the Baylor staff. It's Mike Gundy, the offense coordinator, and Ron West coordinates their running game. You'll see it right here. Kind of the old, they call that the sugar huddle. Get up there quick and let's go. They caught Texas totally off guard. And it was sweet if you're a Baylor fan. Now there have been problems all afternoon for Atterbury. They're down by six. He has missed two field goals. He just missed an extra point try. This one is perfect. And the Baylor Bears on the road are down by only five to the Texas Longhorns. The Longhorns in a must-win situation at three and four. Come right back with 14-25 left in the fourth. is ready to give it back after a 14-yard touchdown run by Dexter Ford. Five-point lead now for Texas. Mitchell and Scarborough waiting for the kickoff. It'll be Scarborough from the six. Looking for a block with a flag down in the play. Making two flags down, and there goes Scarborough. Looking for a block, and he runs right into it. One of the Bears across the 15, taking care of it. Where's Parker? Kenyatta Parker, the linebacker, near the 16. Take it half the distance to the goal, though, with a couple of flags. You'd have to think it's against the return team. That yeah, was either a clip or uh, blocking in the block in the back. I'm not sure uh, which one they will call here, but uh, the flags were pretty prevalent on that play. Fourth quarter futility has been a recurring theme for the Texas Longhorns this year. Call out the Texas Rangers. Collapses against Notre Dame. Oklahoma would not won yet this year when they faced the Longhorns. On the return team. Ten yard penalty. First down. First down. And against Colorado just last week. Well, this is a situation right now that is really going to test the character of the Texas football team. They've been in this situation. They have not responded positively. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Say they're staying with Richard Walton, number 10 at quarterback, in a, in a really tough situation. And this is a situation where Brown has struggled with. He has made mistakes when they've uh, they got, got in a game like this. So I guess uh, they're going to give Walton his chance. See if he can come through and hold the lead. Let's see if they can find some breathing room on the ground. Williams and Mitchell. The workaholics in the backfield are split. They'll throw, though. Down to the deep out. Mike Adams with a huge cushion against Anderson. They've got the first down and the breathing room they were looking for to the 15. Plenty of room against the defensive back. A terrific call by Gene Dahlquist right there. Everyone's going to be thinking, hey, they're going to run it up in here. Maybe they're a little bit tight. This shows great confidence in a young, inexperienced quarterback to throw the deep out from the far hash, one of the toughest throws in football, and you can't execute an offensive passing play any better than that. 17 yards on the reception. Tad and Fitzgerald setting up next to the tackle now. It'll be Mitchell getting the kickout block from Neal. And another first down all the way to the 38. Dan Neal with a serious block for that pickup of 13. He is a serious football player. 69, Dan Neal. This guy's motor is always running. They have been very effective with this play. It's the counter play. Bake the pitch to Williams, and everyone will react to that. Come back underneath and give it to Mitchell. Two snaps will produce 30 yards for the Longhorns out to their own 38. Walt going for the bundle. Adams is there, and he can't hang on to the 25. He left his feet 
It seemed like he was out of balance a little bit, Ron. Yeah, it looked like a Matt Anderson, number 15, just flashed in front of him. I don't believe he tipped the ball. It hit the, it hit Adams right in the hands. You'll see it right here. There's Anderson, 15, flashing in front of him. He did not touch the ball. Right in the bread basket. Couldn't hold on. Oh, Walton saying, I got six, baby. I got six. Just reel it in and run. Oh, baby, come on. Get the glue out. <laughs> Stick him at least. It's illegal to do that. So second and ten now. At the 38. Walton in trouble. Walton on his way down. The sack back around the 35. Justin Snow will get credit for it, but he was slowed down earlier. And a huge third down coming up for Banner now. Texas looking at third and better than a dozen. So the good early penetration. Yeah, Baylor. That's only the fourth sack of the season for the Baylor Bears. That is amazing. You know, and, and they, they only blitz about 5% of the time coming into this game. They have picked up their blitz percentage today. They got beat a couple times in the first half with the blitz. There it was very effective at a very critical time in the game, second and 10. They put Texas in, a, in, a, in the long situation, third and 13. Texas has to hustle. Play clock inside of five for Walton. Will they get it off? Yes, with one left on the play clock. He's hit as he releases it and almost intercepted by the defensive back, George McCullough. As they went for Matt Davis. And Baylor holds, ready to get it back, down by only five. Baylor went to man-to-man -man coverage there, which is a little bit risky in a situation like this. They had single coverage on the outside. They're going to say, we're going to make the quarterback make a tough throw. Richard Walton, you're going to have to beat us with a great throw. They sat on it. George McCullough's had an outstanding game today. Almost came up with a big pick there. Schultz is in to punt it away, the home run threat. Khalif Muhammad waiting back at the Baylor 20. Pressure again. There was a hold. We yeah, didn't clearly, see a flag. Muhammad clearly a hold. From the 23, and he called for a fair catch. Number 24 for the Baylor Bears was tackled. He wow. wasn't just hit. He was tackled on his way to the punter. That was the safety, Rodney Artmore. And now a flag is coming down. Khalif Muhammad arguing that he did not call for the fair catch. But we saw it right in front of the referee. Wow, how could, he miss, how could he miss that one? And Artmore all the way to the sideline was yelling at that referee Line, to no avail. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty against Banner. We'll come right back to Austin. Banner has it back there, down by only five. Zero. Texas has already had two punts blocked today, and Cody Donner is going to make sure they don't have a third, Ron. You'll see him there, number 18, just grabbing Artmore as he comes in there. And what you have to do in that situation is square your shoulders, not turn them. There was the signal for the fair catch very early from Muhammad. Then the indecision after he caught it, like, maybe he didn't see me. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> so now Baylor. Starting as deep as they've been in the second half back at their own 20 yard line. Three of their four previous drives have started the Texas 16 17 and the Longhorns 22. That's why they're back in the ball game. Big hole for Dexter Ford. Dexter Ford is stopped short of the 29 by Carter and Thomas. So nine on the carry for Dexter Ford. We're down to the 12 minute mark left. 28 23 lead for the Longhorns, who have dropped four of their previous five. Dexter Ford is a real competitive running back uh, earlier in the game. He got uh, limping off the field after returning a kickoff. Doesn't even phase him. He's out there right now, battling, scratching, fighting for every inch he can gain. Win here in Austin. We talked about it at the top of the telecast. Could propel Banner seriously into the bowl picture. Copper. Aloha, first down, Jermaine Alfred. Capitalizing between his center and guard in the quick snap. First down, Baylor. We had an opportunity to talk to John McAvick. Got his thoughts on the fourth quarter futility for his team. From our standpoint, we've been so close, and we've lost some games this year that we just never have lost in the past. I think that has really been interesting and tough for our team to understand. We've just always held on and won those games, and this year we haven't been able to do that. So we've searched for that a little bit, and we've worked on it. We've kind of created fourth quarter periods and done things like that to give them the feel of battling uh, down to the stretch. On first down, Dexter Ford, the single set, breaking tackle still on his feet across the 40, 
He's got a first down to the 44. Talk about defining extra effort. Wow. Got under the tackle of Kyle Richardson very early. Finally, brought down by Westbrook. You know, Coach McAvitt talked about, you know, creating that, that intensity in practice, that fourth quarter extra period. There's nothing like doing it on Saturday afternoon. Watch for it here, number eight. Good pad level down. He's not going down. One guy, two, three. Still battling. The pad level is key. When you take that hit, if your pads are down, it's hard for the defensive back to run, to wrap up. And covers that ball up, too, which is critical. So better from their own 19. All the way out to their own 44. First down, the up back, Ruben, going to the boundary. He's got it across the midfield stripe to the 49. Westbrook met him there. Some successful games today for Clifton Rubin, the junior, Welsh, Louisiana. And Westbrook, the last containment for the Texas Longhorns. So now a second and three, a little more than three coming up. Baylor right now is winning the physical matchup in the pits. And let's face it, the defense has been on the field the entire second half for Texas. We saw the huffing and puffing up front by Casey Hampton. Their defensive unit has been out there most of the second half. Second and short. That was Elijah Perkins built into the backfield and dropped by Tyson King. Huge play for the Longhorns, that early penetration. Again, they're coming with the run blitz. They realize their front four cannot contain the running game. They've got to get the linebackers involved in the running game, and they're using the stunts and bringing the linebackers right from behind Alfred. You see the handoff right there to Perkins. There's really nowhere to run because of the penetration. Tyson King quickly into the backfield. Inside of nine and a half minutes left. Texas clinging with a five-point lead. This is third and a little more than three, almost four yards. Perkins is the single set. Three wide receivers to the wide side. And it was deflected, getting a piece of the ball. Gray Mosier. Number nine, Gray Mosier deflecting that pass. To the punting unit, out for Manor. Too early to gamble here on fourth and four. Well, Gary Darnell comes, the defense coordinator comes with the blitz again. These are gutsy calls in this situation. Mosier gets up there at six foot five and bats it down. You'll see him a lower part of your screen. Using all of that six five. Get up there and bat it away. Atterbury running it back to Adams who waits at the 10. Over the head of Adams, will it die? No, it'll find the end zone for the touchback and a break for Texas. They get it back at their own 20. Anything but a comfortable lead the way the fourth quarter has gone for the Longhorns this year with 9.04 left. College football on ABC Sports is being brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know, use Valvoline. Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. And Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Welcome back to Austin. Joel Myers, Ron Jaworski, and Steve Atkinson. As Texas gets it back at their own 20, clinging to a five-point lead, 9.04 left. Bad things have happened to the Horns, you know, in the fourth quarter this year. It started with the Notre Dame game. James Brown has taken over. He's throwing on first down. Adams is the intended target. It was deflected up front. Get a piece of the ball. It was the outside backer, Karen Clarence Cruz. Now James Brown, though, Rod, back in there. He only was in there for one series in the second half, the very first one. Three snaps and a punt for the Longhorns. Yeah, very strange, Joel. As you said, he was in one series. They were three and out. They made a change of quarterback with Walt. He played up until the nine-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Brown's been standing on the sideline for about an hour. He can't be real sharp. And you can throw away one of the interceptions. His receiver should have had it. He lost it. That was in the first series, of the, the very first series of the game. The counter play on the deep handoff. Sean Mitchell taking him to the sideline, getting a block, and going out of bounds with a first down to the 31. Now what a block he got from Ben Adams, who's pulling guard. As well as the tight end, Derek Lewis. Again, they, they, they pull the whole 
the whole front line to get outside on this play, and they do an outstanding job right there. Mitchell gets on that perimeter. He's got great vision. With a five-point lead, Texas needs to hold on to it. They'll take three and go up by eight. Guarantee themselves at least overtime. Play fake. Brown calling his own number on the naked bootleg. And Brown across the 35 to the 36 gets five and more importantly stays in bounds. Keep well, the clock moving. And maybe most importantly, didn't fumble that football. He was waving that thing around like a baton. When you're getting in the area of contact, you've got to wrap that football up. That was clearly a design naked right there to get him on the perimeter. Texas with 212 yards today, averaging 240 at home, only 122 on the road. Good. Love the prescription turf here. <laughs> Talked about it very early. Brand new turf. Cut to only a quarter of an inch. It's a beautiful thing. Second and five. Brown with protection. Adams falling down with a great grab. First down to the 47. That pass complete to number 83, Mike Adams. Adams working against their best, George McCullough. Pushing him back, though, for a cushion. Dangerous throw to the outside. He threw that ball back inside. A lot of those throws, if McCullough gets the jump, the guy that has to make the tackle would be James Brown. That ball's got to be low and to the outside, not back to the inside. But it was complete. Mike Adams made a terrific catch falling down. Clock moving inside of eight minutes left. First down, Texas to their own 47. Little movement on the left side. Both receivers left, Matt Davis and Mike Adams. It can't happen. You just cannot do that offensively. If you're a wide receiver, you don't even listen to the snap count. You look in at that football. You move when the football moves. There's absolutely no excuse for being offside in that. Still first down. So one move, the other went with him. If you're going to do it, first down, I guess, is the place to do it because you've got three to try to get it back on first and 15 now. McAvick right. is saying, don't ever do it. <laughs> don't ever do it. You've got one job to do. Look in at that ball when the ball snap move. Don't even listen to the quarterback as far as the snap count. The heat is on the horns. For all the fourth quarter setbacks. Looking for Williams. Gunning for Adams. Adams almost got away from Anderson. He takes it into better territory, going out of bounds at the 48. James Brown with a big-time throw. He set, looked to his right. Nothing was there. Came back to his left. Made a big-time throw to the outside. You'll see him there. Looks to the right. Not there. Nice footwork. Delivers a strike to the outside, away from the coverage. Adams with great soft hands. Pulls it in. Gets out of bounds. Got nine on first down when it was first and 15. Looking at second and just about six. Capitalizing on his opportunity to play, but Ricky Williams can't get out of the backfield. Justin Snow, the redshirt freshman from Abilene, getting through. So a setback and a loss, just about three yards. Update you as well, and other scores around the country. Now yeah, Florida's got it going again. We're full. Well, he only had four TDs today. Showdown. We're getting ready for Michigan, Ohio State again on the 23rd. Out of the shotgun, third and eight. Deep drop, trying to set up the screen. Instead, it'll go to Williams, and he'll be short of the first down. So he's hit to the 45. He'll be short of the first down by two yards. Again, Baylor coming with the blitz. They brought everyone. James Brown did a nice job of dropping and drifting back into the pocket. Bought a little bit of time, delivered the ball to the outside, but a yard short of the first down. So Banner is going to get the opportunity to take the lead once again. Failed to capitalize the last time, stalling right at the midfield stripe before punting the ball away. And yeah, most importantly, Texas has to punt. It's been blocked twice. <laughs> tackle, as we saw in the last one. Well, they went to their safe, Baylor. They didn't even rush. A wobbler towards the sideline and out of bounds inside the 15. 
So a very successful effort from Mark Schultz, putting Baylor all the way back at third 12. They need to travel to 88 yards when we come back to take the lead. Longhorn fans will not forget September 21st. That all started that fourth quarter futility we've been talking about as James Brown of the Longhorns have the lead by a touchdown. He is rolling right looking for Fitzgerald and it's picked off. Notre Dame now on fourth and goal from the six on the option. Autry Dunson taking it in with 2.57 left in the game. And finally on the last play of the game. The field goal try from 39 yards away. A successful one for Jim Sampson. And the Irish trailing by as many as 10 in the fourth. Come away with a 27-24 win over the Longhorns. Will it happen once again? We'll find out over the next five minutes and 16 seconds. Texas leads it 28-23. It's back at the Baylor 12. Alfred throwing on first down. Looking for his home runs, Brett Pegros, their speediest wide receiver. Westbrook saying, I didn't touch him. Trey Thomas, the safety, coming over as well, but it looked like Westbrook may have had some contact away from the line. Second half possessions for Baylor. Most of them started early, three of the first four deep in Texas territory. The 17 16, as well as the Texas 22. You ought to score points when you get the ball at your 17 yard line and 16 yard line of the opponent, and also the 22. They have uh, converted those into points and got back into this football game. So now, second and 10. The defense asking the crowd to get into it. On second and 10, Darius Johnson turned in. His quarterback, Alfred, thought he was going out to the boundary, and we check in with Steve Atkinson. Steve? Thanks a lot, guys. John McVick just talking to his players here on the bench just moments ago. He says if his defense holds right here, get ready, offense. Get ready for Baylor to blitz, blitz, blitz. He also added, we have got to win this ball game. This ball game is incredibly important to this football team the rest of the season and for the coming years. Back upstairs to you guys. See, we talked about it. They win the rest of their games. They win the Big 12th Southern Division. And a spot at the Trans World Dome in St. Louis against the Big 12 North winner for the championship game. They came in at 2-2 two and two in conference play. Now third and 10. The swing pass. And Dexter Ford, will he get there? No. Denied at the 19. Coming up three-yard shot. Dusty Renfro over to sweep him out of bounds. Texas did a great job of swarming to the football. When you get a running back out on the perimeter, you know, with the talents of, of the guys that Baylor has, they can pick up that 10 yards. But when you get four or five tackers there, you get the contain. Exactly five minutes left. Baylor will give the ball back to Texas. So the Longhorns hold. Give a big, big boost, though, to Schultes. The punter, Mark Schultes, for going for the sideline. So often in college football, you see the high one down the middle. He went to the sideline and got it out of bounds at the 12, limiting the options for Alfred and the offense. The lost arc, the coffin corner kick. Atterbury has been blocked twice. An assist from Donaher, as we saw, with flags on the play. And a delay of game? Or did they call a timeout in time? Yeah, they called timeout. You know, that in this series here for Baylor, uh, for Texas, Gary Darnell did a real nice job. On first down, he came out with the run blitz, trying to blow things up. What uh, Baylor did is they threw the football. That immediately got him into the second and long situation where it dictated what the defense could do to the offense. Five-yard penalty I would have taken before giving up a timeout. We'll come back and talk to Ron Jaworski about that tomorrow night on ABC. The wait is finally over. A movie classic, Disney's The Lion King. Coming to ABC tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. But ABC's double feature continues. The world premiere of To Brave Alaska. Starring Alyssa Milano. Four great hours at the movies tomorrow night. Get the popcorn ready on ABC. I'm sorry. I would have saved those three timeouts. <laughs> I wouldn't have stopped and, and used the timeout here. I need all three. I take the five-yard mark off. Well, I think what happens is when you're down in that situation, you look at the clock, you see the clock going down. You're not aware that, you're, you know, it doesn't make a difference. You've got five yards. Now you're saying, I don't want that coach chewing me out if we get a penalty here. So they go ahead and take the timeout. Well, they get to Atterbury. They back off now. The wobbler coming. It'll be taken by Adams near the midfield stripe. It'll go down right there. It's a great field position for Texas. 
George McCullough, the first one down there, the starting cornerback. Big 12 standings at the start of play today. Texas two and two. They run the rest of their games and coming up the rest of the way after this Baylor matchup. They're at Texas Tech, at Kansas, and then at home to Texas A&M. So if Texas goes to three and two, wins at Texas Tech, Kansas, Texas A&M, will face the winner of the Big 12 North, the championship game in St. Louis. They control their own destiny. It's exactly what John McAvick wanted out of this game. So now first down for the 50. 451 left. The counter play for Sean Mitchell. Into the secondary he goes. Sliding inside the 44. Joel, it's critical now that Texas run the football and get first downs. What has killed them in the three losses that we've talked about in the fourth quarter is the offense has had opportunities to come on the field and kill the clock. They have not done that. That's why today's game is such a big test for them. Now with you know, about four and a half minutes to go, a five-point lead. They have got to get first downs and never give Baylor the ball back. Texas came into the game just about a two-touchdown favorite. Only up by five. And they hang on to the ball. Second and four from the 44. Sean Mitchell breaking tackles. And finally cracked down from behind of the 42 by Sheldon Mallory, the left end. This isn't a big third down at all for me. Oh, no. <laughs> Just talking about the remaining games for the Longhorns. Difficult one coming up. Two real tough ones, in fact, on the road with Tech and Kansas. Hasn't been a great year for the Jayhawks, but still, tough in Lawrence. And finally, at home, Thanksgiving weekend against AM. Third and two. Huge for the Bears. And they hold. Mason and make it Jackson, along with the help of Mason, but Jackson got the big hit in there. Putting down the running back. Penetration, the key in short down situations. I'm surprised Texas pulled that many linemen and allowed the penetration. Baylor comes up with the big stop and forces Texas to punt. Now, Texas, they can afford to take a five here at Markoff, and they should they, take a delay of game here. If they don't, someone's sleeping on the sideline. No one back. And they get to Schultz for the third time. Quick snap. Hand over Ender. And it's in the end zone as Baylor comes back with the ball at their own 20-yard line. 2.37 left. Plenty of time for the Bears and two timeouts remaining. Well, two of the best teams in the ACC are squaring off. Is Darrell Bush, second-ranked defense in Florida State, trying to stop the running game of C.J. Williams in Georgia Tech. That is live tonight. Florida State, Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech at 7 o'clock Eastern. That game only on ESPN. Joel, is exactly what John Makovic did not want to happen. His defense go back on the football field. He had hoped his offense could control the ball and kill the clock. They have it. Now the pressure falls on to their defense. The ground game has keyed everything for better today. They don't have that luxury with only 2.37 left on the clock, but they will go to Dexter Ford on first down. He's throttled at the 23. Casey Hampton isn't excited, is he? Casey, I'd wait about two minutes and 25 seconds more before I start celebrating. Save that energy. Second and seven coming up for the Bears. Stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country following our matchup here in Austin. Alfred with time has it tipped at the line. Making the play was Cedric Woodard. Another true freshman playing for the Longhorns. The defensive scheme that Texas is using right now is leaving the middle of the field open. We'll see if the Baylor coaching staff is wise enough up in the box to notice that and try to attack the middle of the football field. Their play selection so far today has been very good. Drifty car rental postgame report coming up. Scores and highlights. We've got 201 left here in Austin. Third and six for the 24. Alfred looking for the slant. It's Pegros. Pegros, can he break the tackle? Yes, and he gets the first down across the 30. 
Huge play. What an individual effort. He was stopped five yards short of the first down, broke out of it, lunged forward, and picked up the first down on the quick screen out to the flanker. The drive is alive, and so are the Bears at the 31. Inside of two minutes to play. Stop clock, clock stops momentarily with the movement of the chains. He got up Gimpy too, Ron, after that angle tackle. He stays in the game, though. With time, Alfred looking for the boundary, but Muhammad can't hang on to it. Tough day for Muhammad hanging on to the ball. Good read, though. Nothing available. And that's looking for the safety valve to the sideline. That's exactly right. There's nothing wrong with a short gain on this play. It would have been a short game even if Muhammad would have caught the ball. He looked at the post pattern. It wasn't there. Wise decision going in his secondary receiver. So he's incomplete. You still got second down rather than making a, a bad play and throwing an interception. Three wide receiver alignment for the single set. Second and ten. The middle screen for Muhammad. Muhammad getting ripped around the face mask. That should be a 15-yard markoff against Haji Allen. That should cost him because of the flagrance of the violation 15, but we'll find out what the officials do. Muhammad is an outstanding open field runner. What Baylor is doing now is creating those opportunities for him. He is an outstanding punt return, a kick return guy. Get him the ball in the middle of the field with some blockers in front and let him go. Spins it around pretty well, doesn't he? That's going to be a big one. Face mask against the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. You believe it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. First down. Gonna have to go see a chiropractor tomorrow to get his back uh, realigned. Looks like a pretty automatic 15 yarder. <laughs> it's out at the 43. Instead of taking it inside Texas territory. Same formation. Doubling up the wide receivers this time on the short side of the field, though. Alfred has the middle of the field. The tight end's available. He's got a first down to the 41. And now, clock stops again, taking it in. Schmeller, the sophomore from Caldwell, Texas. Minute 19 left. They still have two timeouts remaining. Texas with all three of their timeouts left. They may need it before it's all over. From the 41, Dexter Ford needs to get the sideline. Did he get out of bounds? Yes. Stops the clock as he goes down, shy of the 37, with a gain of four on first down. Well, Monday at 9 o'clock Eastern. What a matchup. We've got a Monday night football. 7-1 Denver Broncos. Best record in the AFC. Heading to Oakland. These two. It's always entertaining when they get together. The Raiders, three consecutive victories, 4-4 four four now. That is a monster matchup on Monday night from the Oakland Coliseum. Join us. That'll be a great one. John Elway having an outstanding season. Terrell Davis, Shannon Sharp. Oh, devastating on offense. And Jeff Hostet and those Raiders are coming on strong. Second and six. Looking for the quick one and overshooting Muhammad. In single coverage with a free safety, Chris Carter. You know, earlier we talked about the, the, the potential two-point conversion when the score was 21 to 16 when they went for the single point at a very miss. It would have made a big difference right here if the score was 28-25 rather than 28-23. They would be almost in field goal range right here. Without a doubt. The little things, Joel, the little things. You mentioned it right away. You couldn't understand why they only went for one. They missed it anyway, instead of going for two. Third down and a long six at that. Short drop, Alfred going for Pegras. And Taji Allen took it right out of the play. Outstanding one-on-one -on -one coverage. You can't do it any better than that, particularly with the pressure situation that Taji Allen is facing right now. Great position, forces him to the sideline. A little bumping, but that clearly is incidental. The ball is thrown to the inside. The ball has to be thrown to the outside. Banner utilizes their second time. Uh, one left will come right back to Austin for the final 60 seconds.
Can the Baylor Bears pick up six yards on fourth down? They've only got one timeout left. They're trailing by five. Joel Myers along with Ron Jaworski and Steve Atkinson. And welcome back again to Austin. While we were away, this crowd has been on its feet. All two minutes we were away, making noise. Trying to help out their defensive unit. Alfred ready to go. The blitz is on. And it's an incompletion. They sold out with a blitz. Kirkpatrick made Alfred get rid of it in a hurry, looking for Muhammad. Well, that should do it. The happiest man in the stadium will be Gary Darnell. He's a much beleaguered. He made a gutsy call right there, went with the blitz, forced the fourth throw from Jermaine Albert. So now Texas can run it out as Baylor has only one timeout left. 56 seconds remaining. Now Texas Joe should get to the 500 mark, but I saw the Wisconsin Northwestern game, so anything's possible. <laughs> yes, sir. Wait, I was at the Miracle of Meadowlands, Joel. <laughs> hey, how about that one? You're dating yourself. <laughs> you know Joe Pisarczyk. He was my teammate. Come on now. <laughs> so I've seen crazy things happen. You said. Hey. <laughs> Shy of the 37, and it's a first down for the Longhorns. Max protection. Banner stops it for a final time. 52 ticks left. Time now for our Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game. What a day it has been. Incredible effort. Dexter Ford from Baylor. Sean Mitchell, the running back for the Longhorns of Texas. Great jobs by those two running backs. They never quit. In fact, regularly breaking tackles. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. But a Chevrolet tradition now, more than a quarter of a century. Congratulations to Dexter Ford, who almost had 100 yards in the first half, finished with 89. Well over the century mark today. Sean Mitchell, who has topped the century mark for the Texas Longhorns. The run of the day belongs to Ricky Williams, and that right now is the difference in the game. The last touchdown for the Longhorns started left from the five on third and goal. Had to reverse his field, and it looked like four Baylor Bears had him. The best five-yard touchdown run you'll ever want to see. Give Baylor a lot of credit. They came in here as 14-point underdogs. They took this baby down to the wire. So it will be a five-point win. John Makovic and his staff didn't care if it was a half-point win. <laughs> they are back to the 500 mark. And in control of their own destiny. It's always been tough in Austin for Baylor. With two wins now for the last 23 tries. That'll do it. They can celebrate a sigh of relief from the Texas Longhorn sideline. Once again, our final score, Texas 28, Banner 23. James Brown came on, settled things down. Ricky Williams, though, with the difference with that incredible touchdown. Our final 28-23. Texas wins it by five tonight on ABC. Katarina Vitt, Dorothy Hamill competing in the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Championships, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. Well, Mr. Score, long on, long on to the college football scoreboard. It's on America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. Now for Ron Jaworski, Steve Atkinson, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody, from Austin, Texas.